Hi everybody, welcome to a special Rewind edition of the Coach Frank Signetti Show. I am IEP Sports Information Director Ryan Rebholz, sitting alongside College Football Hall of Famer, IEP great, college football great, Coach Frank Signetti. Coach, welcome back. Nice to be with you. Coach Signetti's here to talk to us about IEP football and this 2020 homecoming virtual weekend here at IEP. Uh, we'll, uh, in a little bit, we'll be showing you the 2005 IEP Slippery Rock homecoming game, a game won, of course, by IEP 38-17. to Coach, it's been 15 years since you retired from IEP. Do you miss it? Naturally miss the association with your coaches, players, competition, look forward to the games on Saturday, but uh, I think this is one year I would not want to be coaching. Yeah, it is It is a little uh, different of a season, obviously IEP and, and the, the PSAC and other fall sports, uh, not only here in Western PA, but around the country. Uh, not playing, uh, but you know we're still here to celebrate IEP football. All the things that you have done as a coach, you were on the sideline as a head coach for 20 seasons, 182 victories, 13 PSAC championships, 13 NCAA playoff appearances, a couple national title game appearances. The list of accomplishments go on. We're, we're here on Frank Signetti Field. Um, talk a little bit about just what all of that, what your coaching career here at IUP meant to you and some of the things that you can remember. Sure, I'll try to <laughs> make some highlights here. Number one, I feel I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to be the head coach here. I had a great staff every year I was here. Uh, coaches that were intelligent, that uh, Technique-wise, we're great teachers on the field, off the field, and uh, very fortunate to have great players, and that's what it takes. If you have a great coaching staff and you have great players and you develop them and bring them along, you're going to be successful. That uh, you talk about great players, great coaches, that IEP influence is all over college football, professional football, several uh, former coaches of yours, assistant coaches of yours have gone out on to great things. Players of yours have gone on to great things. You took over the program as head coach in 1986. Talk about what you wanted IEP to become. Well, the first goal when I came here, knowing IUP, the great tradition it had, the great line of coaches that preceded me that the, the goal here was to let's take it to another level and see if we can win a national championship. First of all you got to get there then the second part of it is you got to win the game and uh, that was the goal of the program. Every year we started out the most important game on our schedule was the very first game of the year then each Saturday was the most important game and just keep working along, try to win a conference championship, win the Eastern uh, Division of the, uh, not the conference, but uh, the, the ECAC, yep. the region, and get to the national championship. That was the goal. We sold it to our players talked about the great pride they had in that crimson shirt they wore and as I said before coaches all bought in the players bought in and that's why we were successful uh, now you know talk a little bit of, you you said about the first game is always the most important you brought that uh, the the scheduling idea of playing the big boys. You played some division, smaller Division I schools. You played the Grand Valley States. You went out to, to uh, North Dakota. You played some of those. What was the thinking behind that? Well, the first thing, what did we need to compete with at that level of talent? Players we had to recruit. And we tried to go and get the national teams on the schedule that had been successful. So we scheduled Grand Valley. We had about a six or seven uh, year run with them. 
scheduled North Dakota, North Dakota State, and Portland. They pretty much were the teams who were dominating Division II football at the time. So we had them on a regular season schedule, and we also played these people postseason. And I think that's how we really established a national brand IEP football. If I had to take a group of guys, it'd be the team from 89 to 93, they were all over the country playing. Uh, the 89 team got in the postseason, went up to Grand Valley, beat Grand Valley. They were the number one team in the country at the time. After that, we got caught in a snowstorm. We got hung up in Chicago, players slept on the floor mm -hmm. at the airport, <clears throat> got back, had to fly out to Portland the next week, and uh, we beat Portland out there, and then got back home and went down to uh, Mississippi State and uh, played Mississippi College, and we lost that one. But at least that gave us a feel for the caliber of competition and how you were going to play on those days if you wanted to get to the championship. That also helped you recruit more nationally instead of just, just regionally as well, correct? Well, I think what it did, we, it gave us exposure. People knew IEP. Still, our, our recruiting was basically Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Ohio, uh, and we'd pick up a transfer from Division One along the way. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. We're gonna take a little break. We'll be back in a moment. You may show up to IUP unsure of your major. Know this, you'll never be referred to as undecided, but instead as an explorer, encouraged, mentored. Without losing time toward graduation, explore your options, then choose a major. Exploratory studies at IUP. Get to the best version of you. Welcome back. We're still here with uh, Coach Frank Signetti. Coach, uh, talking IEP football, talking IEP homecoming. Uh, 20 homecomings for you, at least as, as head coach. And now several more, because you're still, we still see in the stands up and obviously critiquing everything that's going on down in the field. But from the homecoming standpoint, what are some of the things that you remember most or stand out to you about homecoming here at IEP? The game themselves, that was the game we were playing that week, and that's where all the emphasis was. You know, we, we try to keep everything in sequence, play by play, but homecoming was special because the alumni were coming back, giving our players a chance to go out there and perform and show them how good we were. Now, that partic the particular homecoming game that we'll be showing here in a little bit, uh, it came against a rival. I'm sure that, that helped a little bit on homecoming, both sure. with the crowd and, and being able to get the players involved a little bit more. Uh, now, IEP won that game 38-17. to 17. Um, I'm sure you remember every single snap of, the, of that really. game. <laughs> now, the, that was your final, final year on the sidelines. The team wasn't maybe up to the standards of, of, of some of your other teams. They finished 5-5 five and five that year, 4-2 and two in, in the division. But talk about some of the things that you do remember from that team and, and, and that season. Well, that was a young football team. Uh, Basically, we had a lot of freshmen on it, had some other young players that were in the program at the time. Uh, looking at uh, the season overall, the season was disappointing. Didn't go the way we wanted it to go. Uh, we had to break in a freshman quarterback uh, who, when we recruited it. Uh, Andrew, we had planned on redshirting him, but unfortunately we had an incident in the spring and had some players suspended from the team, and uh, they had to play. But uh, overall it was a good group. The coach played hard every week, and they did a good job going five and five. Andrew Kreewatch, you mentioned, quarterback that year. 
Um, now he was start or he was starting just his sixth career game, as you said. He was he was a freshman. He went seven of seventeen. Uh, did throw for 186 yards and a touchdown. That touchdown was a 53 yarder in the third quarter. Uh, but you know he became you know one of the all time greats, especially at quarterback for IEP. When you look back at the at the long line of quarterback success, um, what do you remember about Andrew's growth? from freshman year to then what you witnessed from a distance through his senior year? Well, I think Andrew, we had high expectations. You know, we thought we could redshirt him. Fortunately, he had to play, but with Kevin Waddle coming back from suspension the next year, Andrew was able to get the redshirt year that he needed. And uh, Jimmy uh, Smith, coached him during his career here. Jimmy did a great job developing fundamentals, footwork, rhythm passing. Jimmy is very knowledgeable of the passing game and I thought he did an outstanding job with Andrew. I didn't get to see him play that much that fall because I was down in North Carolina uh, the year he came off his red shirt. Saw him a few times after that, but uh, when you look back at the quarterbacks we've had here, first one that'll stand out in my time would be Tony Alucci, Brian Ironman, uh, Andrew would compare to their type of play. You know, he's a pocket passer, could throw football, had a strong arm, could read progressions and go through progressions. So he had a great career here, finished strong. I think he got into postseason once or twice. And uh, I would say he had a successful career. Now what helped him, what I'm assuming what helped him during that first year was a strong, strong backfield. And that was led by Chris Morgan. Chris was a was a junior in that 05, uh, on that 05 team. In the, the homecoming game specifically, he ran for 168 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He finished that year with almost 1,300 yards and 11 scores, so a pretty good year for, for an IEP back. And he wrapped up his, his career second to only the great Michael Mann. Uh, Chris had 38, just over 3,800 rushing yards, 34 touchdowns. What do you remember about Chris? Well, you know, that's a special story <laughs> right there. Love to uh, hear it. He's from Woodland Hills, played for uh, Coach George Novak. He was a great football player. Kid that had the, some fringe Division I offers from the MAC and so forth. And uh, Mike Campola did a great job recruiting him and got him here. We were going to redshirt in his first year here. Uh, we needed a safety, so we took him over, put him at safety, played safety that year. Then, his, I think it would be his sophomore year, Mike Jamison, who was our running back at the time and a great back, got hurt over at Bloomsburg. And we had ship coming in here. They were undefeated next week. And we had to move Chris from safety to tailback. He went out in that game. I think he rushed for 170 yards. We beat him, I think, 19 nothing. We upset him here. So he was a gamer, special player, great kid, good teammate, you know. And his production says it all. I do want to point out Chris's two touchdown runs that day against Slippery Rock, 24 yards in the first quarter, and then had an 80-yard run late in the third. That that gave IEP a 31 to 14 victory. Uh, shouldn't say all, but sewn it up. But pretty comfortable lead going into the fourth quarter. Um, eight players, d despite a, a down team and a disappointing year. You still had eight players earn all-conference honors, uh, first and second teamers, including you had Terrence Jackson on the defensive side. He was the defensive uh, freshman of the year in the conference. And you also had uh, offensive lineman Jason Capizzi uh, was on that list of all-conference. Now, 
I want to talk about Jason for a couple minutes. He went on in 2006, his senior year, he was an All-American lineman, played in the NFL for a couple teams, uh, earned a couple championships, uh, including a Super Bowl ring with the Steelers. How did Jason compare to some of the other great IEP offensive linemen, especially the ones that you, you've, you've coached and seen? Sure. Uh, number one, Jason was a Division I transfer and came in from the University of Pittsburgh and did an outstanding job here. Mike Campola coached him, did a great job developing him. Chris Bajay had started with him and then Chris got a job at Youngstown and Mike Campola took over. But if I were to compare Jason I got a look at Chris Valerio, who was a 12-year player in the NFL. Uh, Leander Jordan, I think, had 10 or 11 years in. Uh, Nick Injury finished his career. He, Jason fits in very well with those two. You know, his pro career, he bounced around in there. He never got to be a starter in the league like the other two did, but uh, I would say he had a good career. Moving on from, from players to your coaching staff, you've already mentioned a, a couple of them. Uh, Coach Jim Smith, Mike Campolo. Uh, also be uh, have to mention our current head coach, Paul Tortorella. They were all with you as assistants back in 2005, and, and some of them, Coach Tortorella was, has been here since 1995. Right. Talking specifically about, about Coach Tort, you hired him. What do you remember about him as a, as a young defensive assistant coming up, and, and how impressed have you been with the job that he's done with IEP football since he right. took over in 2017? Well, Tort has done an outstanding job at IEP. He had a good background before coming here. He had Division I experience in Maryland, Division I experience in Akron. I needed a defensive coordinator, brought him in in 95, uh, coached the defense until I left. Really did an outstanding thing. thing they impressed me about Tort. Players loved him. He was a great teacher. Excellent game day manager. You know, uh, I think he called defensive plays for, what was he here, 22 years? 22 years. 22 years. And uh, I was hoping he'd get the job sooner than he did. And uh, I've had the opportunity to come in here, watch him practice since he's taken over. He's done an excellent job. You can't do a better job than what they're doing here right now. And uh, he's very knowledgeable. He's a great game day coach. Players love to play for him. He's had experience on both sides of football. His work at Maryland was on the offensive side of the ball, at Akron on the defensive side of the ball. He's got special teams background, so he, he had the full package. He had everything you're looking for, and he has everything you're looking for to be a head coach. Coach Tortorella, 31 wins uh, since becoming IEP head coach in 2017, and, and that included a, a debut year of 13-1. Uh, and one. A conference championship and a trip to the national semifinals. We're going to take one more great break. We'll be back. Going on to college signals independence, but independence doesn't mean you have to go it alone. At IUP, we'll assign you a guide from day one, someone you can turn to for advice or encouragement, and our Q&A center will point you in the right direction and get you the answers you need. We know a little help will take you a long way. We believe in you, IUP. When you think back to homecoming, you know, huge crowds, uh, the whole town really starting on Thursday, 
really getting involved in it. Uh, we've had a lot of success on homecomings. Uh, usually when you play a Slippery Rock or uh, uh, recently a cow in the last 20 years, uh, it's always a big game. Um, and it's just a, a lot of former players are on the sideline. Uh, when you have a tradition like we have and coaches that have been here a long time, you get a lot of players always coming back and, you know, there's relationships there that if you change coaches every three or four years, it, you know, you don't have relationships with former players like we do. So uh, it's always a special thing, I think, really actually uh, more for the community and the university and the alums than it actually is for the players, to be honest with you. Welcome back. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this special coaches pregame show. I'd like to thank Hall of Famer Coach Signetti for joining us, talking a little bit about IEP football, IEP homecoming. Now the 2005 IEP Slippery Rock homecoming game is about to begin. Sit back and enjoy. IEP players are coming down the center of the field here in between the band and we're going to go to the sideline. Our sideline reports are brought to you again by McGill's Car World, Wayne Avenue South, Indiana, and by the Ironwood Grill, Route 286 West, Indiana. Those are our sideline sponsors. And here's the guy you'll hear from on the sideline today, Doug Steve. Doug, we're down to you. Okay, thank you, Jack. And, uh, you know, I think it's more the coaches that get hyped up with this Slipper Rock uh, battle today. The coach is really uh, uh, excited, enthusiastic in the locker room. Uh, but the players are really ready to go. As I came down through the field, I saw Johnny White, former IEP wide receiver. Kevin McCorkle was in the locker room before the game. Bob Taylor it was in the locker room before the game. So, you know, the homecoming festivity is still there. And, uh, Jack, I want to congratulate you personally, too, on uh, your 400th broadcast today. It better be a win because I don't want to lose to these guys <laughs> this year. Uh, Paul Tortorella told me a couple of things. He goes, hey, to stop Slipper Rock, you have to stop the run. If you can stop the run, you'll be in great shape. Paul Felix, or Carmen Felix, told me, guys, um, the one thing that's the key for them is the multiple fronts that Slipper Rock will show. With the multiple fronts, he said the key will be Tanner, Tanner Whitaker picking up the, the uh, calls on the front line. You will see a lot more of one back set from IEP this afternoon, try to throw Slipper Rock off, off that path. And Coach Felix wants a fast start. He said, we need to be more exacting in our passing game. Now I'm going to go over here and get the coin toss and tell you what Coach Ignetti said. Okay, Doug, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's always been great working with all you people down through the years with Ray Goss and Bill Betts and Mark Burdick and John Flickinger and Goose Goslin and everybody. It's uh, just a great thing with Doug on the sidelines. Adds a lot to our broadcast. Let's go to the field now. The visitors, you're going to call the talk. Okay, call this before I flip it, all right? I've got a standard silver dollar, a head and a tail. What are you going to call? He called a head. I'll leave this hit the ground, all right? Okay, heads it is. You won the toss. You won the receive. You won the receive. Okay. okay, there you have it. Slipper Rock has won the toss, and they will receive this afternoon. One thing you need to watch out for also, Andrew Cree watch. He banged up a shoulder at practice on Wednesday, and Coach Signetti said, hey, he still has not thrown the ball that well today, this afternoon, or the, in the pregame, so pay close attention to that. He told the team, guys, we need great sideline organization. Know your groupings. Play smart. Three things the key, four things, win the special team battle, win the turnover battle, control the line of scrimmage, and he goes, he said, guys, we need to make plays in the passing game if we want to come out here with a victory today. Last thing he said, if we had a great Tuesday, Wednesday of practice, our best of the year, let's put that over here to game day here this afternoon. Jack Flick, back upstairs. Okay, Doug, thank you. Yes, uh, that's a good point about pre-watch. He did bang up his shoulder a little bit at practice this week, as Doug reported. We will watch that closely because it determines whether or not eventually Brad Doss is going to be a red shirt or not. Yeah, and if Dawson has to play and uh, play a number of minutes, that red shirt will go down the tube. So you're trying to play that uh, red shirt game with, with a couple of guys, but if you get a guy hurt, you, you have to go with Dawson. So we'll see how that pans out. But I, I do think that uh, the last couple of weeks, especially last week, pre-watch, you could tell he's really starting to get accustomed to this offense and starting to, to blend in, not trying to force as many balls uh, as, as he did earlier in the season. And look for Chris Morgan again today to step up. Boy, Morgan's been tough this year, averaging 123 yards per game. And when you need somebody to go to the house for you, Morgan's your guy. Brad Whitaker will be kicking to Paul Favors and Mike Kelly, who is out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Those are two talented guys who can really run. Favors is out of Perry. Brad Whitaker, the kicker for IUP. 
He's from Stevens City, Virginia, and we're about ready to go on AM 1160 WCCS and RedZoneMedia.com as we get ready for our championship game here today in the PSAC West. I say championship because it's an important game. The other big game will start at 3 o'clock, Edinburgh and California playing down at Cal. Right now, if, if anything, it's a very light, maybe a mist, but I don't think it's really raining. We have a few umbrellas up here and there. And if we can go this way, we'll be okay today. Yeah, one thing is for sure, the temperature has dropped considerably from about 8 o'clock this morning. So yeah. it is rather uh, chilly outside. It's a chill in the air. Temperature around the 50-degree mark. We're still waiting for something here. Everybody getting into position. The players have been out on the field. And the coach is pacing up and down the sidelines, getting all the officials in position. We gave you their names. And I think finally we are ready to go. IUP Slippery Rock and the series continues. Brad Whitaker will be kicking from left to right, and here he goes, and he approaches the ball end over end. It's going to be a short kick coming up and bouncing. 15-yard lines, it's favors, comes to the left side across the 25 and down around the 26-yard line. Nice tackle by Leo Wood, who picked it up from last week where he blocked the kick. Now he comes back with the first tackle of the afternoon. And Slippery Rock will have the ball first as they'll move it from right to left. But Slippery Rock's going to be backed up 15 yards on an unsportsmanlike conduct on the far side of the field. See Quentin the flag. Cobb. Yeah, there's a flag. Quentin Cobb got hit from behind. The official's going to call a holding. Uh, maybe that's what he saw at the tail end, but Cobb got flattened from behind. So that's going to take Slippery Rock back. And it was at the end of the play, not even on the same side that the tackle was made. Well, that no, it is a personal foul, it's Jack. Personal foul. You're right, Flick. Yeah, half the distance, and I know Dr. George Mahalik would not be very happy with that at all. I don't know if I'll be able to take a look on the on the uh, TV side of things. We got our monitor back working with us this week, but uh, we that was a situation where, you know, you're right. Coach Mahalik cannot be happy about that with uh, a play being made on the far side of the field. So Slippery Rock starts what uh, looked like to be a good field position. They're deep in their own territory. The ball will be positioned at the 12-yard line on the near side hash mark for Slippery Rock. The quarterback is Nate Crookshank out of Bishop Carroll. He can run as well as he can pass. He's thrown for 824 yards this year. Nice is the solo setback. Fake in the boot to the right side. Throws to Cremonese right through his hands. The big tight end out of Latrobe should have had that. He was headed upfield. He forgot the football. Incomplete. Yeah, just a boot to the right by Crookshank coming out with uh, play action and uh, you're right, Cremonese had the ball right in his hands, tried to turn up and run before he had it, and it's second and ten. The interior line, Miles Arnold is the center. He's out of Massachusetts. The tackles are Ryan Travis from Bethel Park and Mike Butterworth out of nearby Northern Cambria. The guards are Don Harbison out of Fort Cherry and Ron Klauser out of Altoona. And the second play of the game is a delay to Nice, and he tries to filter his way through. A tough, hard runner. Customarily, what they've had at Slippery Rock, and Nice will bang it on out to the 16-yard line for a gain of four. Third down and coming up and six to go. And a nice tackle there by Brandon Lawrence as Nice cut back against the grain. Lawrence was able to hang on to his legs and bring him down before Nice got away. And Nice uh, coming into the game with 376 yards on the ground. He's averaging about 70 per game, but he is a uh, touchdown uh, maker. Nice uh, has five on the season and, again, very good on special teams. Out of Butler, IUP had a pretty good product and tailback out of Butler named Larry Monsilovich. Here we go, sprinting to the right on third down, playing the toss is complete, and a first down to the far side to Colin Golden. Golden, who came into the game with 18 receptions. And Andre Henderson from the safety came up to make the tackle. And the pickup is eight yards on the play to the 25-yard line. Slippery Rock has a first down. Well, I can already see how uh, Slippery Rock likes to use a lot of play action. And they run sort of uh, like a West Coast type of offense, Jack. Just kind of nibble away at you and uh, keep coming at you with short passes. That time, a good route run by the receiver. Good throw. Three receivers to the right, and Luke Wetzel is to the left. Nice is the lone setback behind Crookshank, who drops the football, picks it up, starts to run, is hit, and down he goes at the 25-yard line line at the line of scrimmage. Crookshank just simply dropped the football and it was tackled by Ty DeSidero of IUP and Terrence Jackson from the line backing spot. Second down at about nine to go. Not raining. A cloudy day. Uh, 
cool day, 50 degree temperature. We're just underway in the homecoming game at George P. Miller Stadium. This time, Golden is split out. We slot man to the left and favors his Y way to the left. And the ball goes to Nice off the left side. Nice bangs his way toward the 30-yard line, and that's where he goes down. Josh Nice, who is their workhorse. DeSidero making the tackle again. You're also going to hear from Corey Manful, a running back out of Kensington, Ohio, has a couple of touchdowns and 348 yards. He'll come in for Nice later on. Third and five. That's Slippery Rock offensive front. They are big. The, uh, the guard is Don Harbison. He is... 6'4", 310 pounds. <laughs> yeah, they have some size up there. Luke Wetzel wide to the left, or make it to the right. Favors to the left, along with Golden. Crookshank looking, throws back to the right, and the pass is caught, and uh, one tackle missed, but slowed up, and Matt Scott then made the tackle. Was that DeSidero shot through there first of all, the pass to Wetzel? Yeah, he and uh, Quinton Cobb came on a corner fire, and Cobb almost got, well, he did get the Crookshank just a little bit late, but it forced him to get rid of that ball quickly. And uh, we, uh, I'm going to take a look here at the replay. Now, Cobb coming quickly. And that was Lawrence, actually, Jack, not to Sidero. Lawrence and Cobb coming okay. in on Crookshank. But uh, short of a first down, and Slippery Rock will have to punt. All right, the ball is at the 29. Ray Rotel, averaging 37 and a half, will be kicking to Saletti. And Rotel kicks it high. Towering kick. Backing up Saletti. Hauls it in at the 27. Fakes right. Comes up the left side at the 30, the 35, the 40. Keeps his foot in. And he goes to the 49-yard line. Tackled on the play on the return by Ross Hornish. And IUP ball and an outstanding return by Saletti. Something they haven't had this year. And what makes an outstanding return? Outstanding blocking. And Steve Cooper just came off the field. Pretty pumped up, Jack, because he threw a great block. He and Victor Callahan sprung that return. Good block both sides of the way. It was uh, actually Garrett Majors along with Callahan who made the big block, and then Cooper made a big block downfield to spring that big return. IUP offensive line, Tanner Whitaker out over the football. You've got Live and Good up there along with Bo Elliott and Capizzi and Warning, and Morgan, the leading ball carrier, gets the ball. The talented running back out of Woodland Hills picks up a couple of yards to the 49 of Slippery Rock. Second down and eight yards to go. Defensively, they've got a very solid defense. Not spectacular, but solid. Josh Zeisloff out of Bloomsburg. They missed uh, out on this guy, and he made the tackle. Second down and eight at the 49 of the Rock. Looked as if Crewatch and Morgan ran into each other a bit before that last handoff. Flanker to the right side, split end to the left from the I formation, but as Morgan gets the ball, we have a whistle. Yeah, left side of the IUP offensive line, there was some movement, so that'll cost IUP five. We're just underway, the first series for IUP after the return of the punt by IUP Saletti to the IUP 49. And the walk-off is against IUP, takes them back to their own 46-yard line where it is second down. And 13 to go. You made this point prior to the game, Jack, that IUP needs to start off quickly. Well, defensively, they were able to hold Slippery Rock now on this first drive, already uh, heading towards midfield. Hopefully, uh, IUP can at least win the field position battle early in this game. That's been real important for them the last couple of weeks. Mobley, the slot the right side, and Oliver flank to the right. Lone setback, and it goes to Morgan. He crosses the 50-yard line to the Slippery Rock 49. Picked up about five more yards. Chris Morgan. Tackled by Zeisloff again. Morgan coming into the game with five touchdowns, 618 yards, averaging four yards a carry. He also has nine receptions on the year. So we've got third for IUP, third down. And eight yards to go for the first down. Third down. First series for IUP on our homecoming game here at George P. Miller Stadium. Nothing, nothing game. From the gun for the first time, Andrew Crewatch, the freshman quarterback from North Allegheny. Has time, now throws, and incomplete, way off the mark. Had time momentarily, and then he got some pressure and right up the middle. Blitzing was Seth Randall, a linebacker out of Northeast Pennsylvania, and now it's IUP's turn to punt. Yeah, that time Slippery Rock went with a man-to-man -man defense. Their coverage was, it was basically a press coverage. And by the time Oliver turned around, Crewatch had already thrown the football, and then Oliver was not sure where that ball was, but uh, good coverage by that Slippery Rock corner. This is Rary, third in the conference, 40 and a half a kick. Nice, who returns at 24 a clip, is back there to return. They have great teams. 
a towering kick, although short, Nice comes up to make a catch, dives for it in a crowd at the 25. So, slippery rock ball for the second time at the 25. We're going to step out. It's nothing, nothing. The Rock has the football. Let's take this 30-second time out on the IEP Football Network. This is not a test. For a limited time, Luther Ford announces 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles, plus a 75,000-mile warranty, and tires for life, a $2,000 value on qualified vehicles to qualified customers. All credit applications will be reviewed. Their finance professional can buy credit risk. Limited time offers 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles at Luther Ford Lincoln Mercury, Homer City in Indiana, home of tires for life. Henderson. And a pitch from the 25-yard line, the flanker screen is caught by Colin Golden from the line of scrimmage to 25 for six yards to the 31, second and four. Seven, now almost seven on the play. We're still going to make it a, almost four yards for the first down. Wetzel comes in as a wide out. Nothing, nothing game. Slippery Rock. The second time they've had the football. Wide to the right goes Wetzel. To the left side comes Paul Favors. He's a threat, a deep threat. He has 17 receptions. Offset backfield. Ball is handed off to Nice. He slides his way through to the 34. Looks like he's going to be a yard short of a first down with third down coming up. Making the stop for IUP. On the bottom of the pile is number 34. That's Brandon Lawrence. Brandon Lawrence made the tackle. Slippery Rock on the season is 38% in... Uh, third down conversions and uh, not uh, too shabby last week they were able to convert a number of third down conversions in their 28 21 win over california kept the uh, cal defense on the field and that high octane offense off and even better they're 45 percent on fourth down here we go third and one it's nice with a football bangs his way and i don't think he made it he appears to be just inches short let's wait and see Doug, you're down there. Can you make a better look of it? He is, he is short by about a half a football, if that, because he has to get to the 35-yard line. So it'll be interesting to see what George Mahalik does right here. Back uh, pretty deep in their territory. We'll see. Well, he's going to punt. Yeah, he's going to punt. It's too early in the game. Adam Schmidt did an excellent job getting low on Nice and making that hit. And then Andre Henderson came up to make sure that he didn't stretch that football across the uh, lead stick. So good team defense there causing this slippery rock punt. Ray Rotel, who's from Sharpsville, Pennsylvania, will be kicking to Anthony Saletti. Nothing, nothing. Eight minutes and ticking in the first period. And we have a bigger crowd now, so we've got a lot of uh, Slippery Rock people here, and there's movement on the line for Slippery Rock. Yeah, I think it was uh, the up-back who actually moved early there. Rashoski. Now they're going to call delay a game. Rashoski was trying to get the playoff. He was barking out the signals, and then he moved forward when I saw that flag thrown, but the play clock had already run out. Five-yard penalty takes them back. And they'll respot it at the 29. Ray Rotel kicking to Anthony Saletti, who's positioned back at his 35-yard line to receive this punt. Snap is good. Has time. The kick is short. Saletti comes up. He'll make the catch, muff the ball, fall on the ball, and cover it at the 41. And IUP will have it for the second time at their own 41 with 7 minutes, 49 seconds to go in the first period and a nothing-nothing game. Our sideline reports are brought to you in part by McGill's Car World, Wayne Avenue South, Indiana. You know they're a AAA inspection, auto-approved repair facility. Ironwood Grill, wood-fired pizza ovens, second-floor mezzanine, outside heated deck, still a good place even today to have your dinner. Nothing, nothing. IUP at their own 41 I formation. Let Stokey, the freshman from Bishop Gill, foils the fullback, showing blitz slippery rock. Morgan gets the ball, gets by a couple of guys, and keeps on going. And tough, tough runner picks up nearly four on the play. Yeah, and that's that's a good uh, run right there. Good gain on first down because they were blitzing with slippery rock. They guessed right, blitzing off that. Uh, offensive left side, but it was picked up uh, picked up just enough for Morgan to get at least three yards out of there. He was able to dance his way out, so uh, first down pickup of three, and again, IUP right now so far in this one, uh, winning the field position battle as they have it at the 44-yard line. Three-yard pickup, second down seven. Fred Lee in the game out of Bishop McDevitt. Sophomore wide receiver is flying to the right, split receiver to the left side. Second down play, Crewatch back to pass, throws it. Lee makes the catch, falls down, first down at the 47 of Slipper. Rock. Excellent protection for Crewanch at time. Akeem Etheridge, the defensive back, 
uh, kind of slipped down and a good route run uh, that catch to be made by Oliver. A lot of time, and again, Crewatch just stepping right into that throw, looked very comfortable on that one, made the catch, and a first down IUP. First down from Crewatch, nine yards on the play to Fred Lee. Saletti is wide to the left side for IUP, Mobley inside him. Saletti coming into the game with 16 receptions, two touchdowns, including one last week. On first down, they'll go from the gun. Whitaker snaps it, and the handoff is to Morgan. Morgan tries to go left, comes back. They're riding him Morgan down and bring him down at the 45-yard line. Jake, Jake Barzen, a linebacker from Pittsburgh, North Hills, with three sacks on the air, makes the tackle. A gain of three, second down and seven. Not a bad play call by Carmen Felis there, especially with the blitzing backers, the very active backers of this Slippery Rock team trying to catch him there on that inside draw. Uh, but a good job and a good uh, solid tackle by Jake Barzen who uh, actually, if he doesn't make that hit, Morgan could be still running. So Letty to the left, slot inside him is Cameron Mobley, Dianco Oliver to the right. Out of the eye formation, Lestoki the fullback, the fake is to the tailback, and over the middle it goes a screen to Morgan, cut down at the 43. He would have had more yardage, but an outstanding defensive play by Seth Randall, the linebacker out of Northeast Pennsylvania, just came in, got a block, and just got enough. Doug, we're gonna go down to you on the sideline with an update. No, going back to that uh, fourth and short play, George Mahalik really wanted a measurement, but the official would not give it to him. He was livid over there along his sideline last series. Jack? Okay, thank you, Doug. Courtesy of McGill's Car World. Here on the replay, you see that nice tackle just barely got him. Yeah, and Bo Elliott ran right by Randall, or shall I say Randall ran right by him, and, and uh, that uh, caused that big tackle. Nothing, nothing game. Third down IUP at the 43 out of the gun, and there's a whistle. Well, that wasn't the play clock. It didn't run out. Somebody must have moved up front, huh? Yeah, it looks like there's some movement, so it'll be now third and, and ten. And you hate to see those penalties, especially when you get on the other side of the 50. And uh, right now, both teams have hurt themselves with calls. Both teams are off to a slow start. 5-18 first period, nothing, nothing. As we mentioned, Cal is playing at Edinburgh at 3 o'clock today. Any other scores on the PSAC scoreboard? We'll get those to you. Former IUP players, Ernie Machoice, I see him here today. He's always at the game. Matt Sharaka, who, of course, is the son-in-law of head coach Frank Signetti. Talked with Matt a little while ago. Remember when he played tight end? That's how, how deep with three, three real good tight ends for IUP at the time. Saletti wide to the left, third down and 10. Slot inside him, Mobley, and Oliver lines up to the right. From the gun on third and 10 at the 47 of the Rock. Crewatch has time. Let's go. First down catch to Saletti. Breaks a tackle. Keeps on going, and he's near the 25-yard line. Nice play, and then a good rack right after by Saletti. Oh, wow. Great throw by Andrew. That's all timing. That's what that's all about. And Saletti ran an excellent route right in front of the defensive back, and the ball arrived right on time. As soon as Saletti comes out of his break, Crewatch's throw gets right there, and uh, Saletti makes the catch. He, they're actually backing these cornerbacks up, Jack, and they're allowing them uh, about two or three yards, IUP receivers are doing a great job in running the routes. 21 yards on the play to the 26 of Slippery Rock. IUP on the move with an offset backfield. Andrew Crewatch has receivers left and right, gives it off to Morgan, shirt tail out, turns, spins, fights his way, and digs only to the 25 for a yard. Tough, tough going. Slippery Rock knows they must stop the run. They know they must stop Morgan. Among those in on the stop was Corey Lasik from Pittsburgh, North Hills. Well, Seth Randall, the middle backer, and also Jerome Whiting, also a backer, got through on a blitz. Randall both blitzing, and Morgan, although he only picked up a yard, uh, it looked like he was going to be dropped for a three- or four-yard loss, but a spin move uh, and just a whiff by Randall right off the bat, and Morgan uh, turned something. Nothing, nothing, under four minutes. IUP has... The tight end, Pickens, on the left side, and a solo setback. Morgan takes it, tries to turn the corner, and he does momentarily, and then steps out of bounds Morgan at the 20 the on the far side of, of the field. Slippery Rock running him out of bounds. Over there, cornerback Aaron Berducci, who ran him out of bounds. And Chris Morgan from Woodland Hills puts the ball at the 20 of Slippery Rock. 
and a third and four situation. So again, with IUP, if you're going to face a third down, especially with this young team, third and shorts are where you want to be. And uh, this is a very makeable third down. You don't have to think long. You can uh, play action here, maybe run the football on third and four. Saletti is flanked to the right. Dianco Oliver, wide left, Mobley slot inside him. Morgan alone set back behind Fiwatch, who drops back to pass. He looks, he's in trouble. We have to throw it away because Saletti was being held up, not illegally, by Brandon Roshofsky, and I think he was the primary receiver. But Crewatch wisely threw the ball in the dirt, and it'll be fourth down, and here comes Whitaker. Yeah, give your team a chance to kick a field goal. Slippery Rock came with a five-man front that time, and they were coming hard after Crewatch, and nobody open, just dump it away and take your chances with the field goal. This will be a 37-yard attempt by Brad Whitaker. IUP kicker this year is two for four. His longest is 45. He's had one block. Rary will hold. Snap and the spot. The kick is on its way. Looks strong and it looks good. It is good. IUP on the board first. Three to nothing on Brad Whitaker's field goal from 37 yards out. Three nothing IUP. 332 first period. Back in 60 seconds on AM 1160 WCCS and RedZoneMedia.com. Home comfort isn't just the temperature in your house. Home comfort is also about the quality of air in your home and how it makes you feel. And you should know that Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning carries Lennox Healthy Climate products that can help you rid your home of dust, dirt, pollen, and stale air while reducing growth of harmful organisms. See Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning, 1075 Philadelphia Street, Indiana, your local Lennox dealer for improving the quality of air in your home. The Co-op Store in Indiana is your IUP homecoming headquarters with special homecoming hours. Friday, 7 till 5, Saturday, 8 till 6, Sunday, 10 till 3. Get free apples, lollipops, and drinks. Save 10 to 50% off select IUP clothing, 20% off IUP imprinted gifts. Join the IUP women's basketball team at the Co-op Store to raise awareness for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. Check out IUPstore.com for details. The Co-op Store, your homecoming headquarters in the Hub Complex on the IUP campus. 1160 WCCS. Jack Benedict, John Flickinger, Doug Steve, IUP on the board first. 37 yard field goal, Whitaker, three to nothing, and the kick is going to be headed to Favors, who hauls it in at the seven to the middle of the field to the 15. He's hit, dragged down by Ken Witter, the freshman backup wide out from Norristown, Pennsylvania. That's another point that IUP wanted to do is improve on their special teams play. Yep, and so far today, I know there's a long way to go, but they have in Witter. That's just a heck of a play by Ken. He stayed in his lane nicely, and uh, he did not allow the return man to really make a move on him. He tried to cut back to the field. That's what happens when you stay in your lane. You can stop the cutbacks, and he was able to do that that time as Favors had nowhere to go. Nate Crookshank, the quarterback out of Bishop Carroll High School running the attack. He'll run the football. He's rushed for 106 yards this year. He has Manful as the running back now who gets the full, gets the handoff and is hit from behind as he crosses the 20 to about the 22, Brandon Lawrence and Plowman over there to make the stop on IUP for IUP. Manville is a pretty good backup. In fact, you could maybe almost make it as a, a co Starter. He's out of Kensington, Ohio, and he's rushed for two touchdowns, 348 yards this year. Well, that time they had a 280-pound left tackle pulling on the play, but he didn't block anybody, and uh, that down, led to the seven. short gain. 3 nothing. IUP the lead. Two minutes, 50 seconds counting in the first period. Crookshank to the left now, to the right, throws the pass. It's caught and dropped. Incomplete. It was held on to momentarily, but Andre Henderson, the freshman who I think is going to be an all-star in the making here out of Erie Strong Vincent. I talked with him uh, this week just a little bit after practice. Congratulated him on the way he handled the interview a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. being named player of the game. Here's, you know, as a kid, he was a true freshman. Absolutely, and I couldn't agree with you more, Jack. He has a good attitude, uh, a smart kid, and he can lay hits on you, and he did right there, knocking that football away. IUP has Jarrell Jackson and Victor Callahan, two seniors at right and left corner, and Henderson, the rookie back there, third down, seven to go at their own 21-yard line for the Rock. Trailing IUP, three to nothing, man in motion, and the clock ran out. That's five seconds, and they just don't seem to be at the top of their game right now. No, they're not in sync. Slippery Rock averages 90 yards in penalties per game, and uh, they're starting to add up early in this one. That's the second delay a game in this first quarter. 
Slippery Rock averages 25 and a half points a game. They give up 27 a game, rushing 188 and passing 176 for 364 yards average on the season each game. And it is Colin Golden as the slot man left and favors his way to the left. Wetzel is the receiver to the right side. Crookshank takes the snap, drops back to pass. He's in trouble. He runs out of it. And now he comes to the right side, cuts it back up, takes a pretty good hit as he comes across the 25 to the 27. But he's short of a first down by maybe a yard or so. And Jackson, Terrence Jackson, put a pretty good lick on the quarterback. Jackson out of Pencrest High School. But it's going to be close enough for a measurement. So let's uh, take a quick 30-second timeout. IUP 3, Slippery Rock, nothing. Let's step out for this 30-second break. Your kids mean a lot. One's headed to college, another will be driving soon, and it can be a bit overwhelming. That's why you owe it to yourself and your children to see the family at W.G. Meckling Insurance Agency. The Meckling Insurance family knows how important it is to insure your young driver, and with all the things kids take with them to college, it's essential that you're covered for these items, too. Meckling Insurance cares about your family. Call W.G. Meckling Insurance. You're not just a number with them. Well, he's short, right, Flick? Yeah, short by inches, and uh, we saw it uh, up here on the replay, and I thought for sure that he was short. They spotted the football right there in that same spot, and uh, they will punt Will Slippery Rock. So IUP, once again, defensively, they make a big play. Slippery Rock hurts themselves with penalties. We saw Crookshank running the football. It just reminded me, flashback of the high school years yeah. when he was, oh, uh, was he a scamper? Yeah. Nobody's a McCavish, but he has some qualities that Randy McCavish had. Ray Rotel ready to kick. It's fourth down and inches at their own 27. And the snap, they do get it back to him. Rotel kicks it high. Towering kick near side. Saletti watches it bounce. It takes uh, a roll for Slippery Rock to the IUP 34, maybe 33-yard line. 40, yard 40 yards on the punt, no return for IUP with 1.49 to play in this first period on homecoming day 2005. 33-yard line of IUP. IUP's had it at their own 49, their own 41, and now the 33. I know the uh, rain looks as if, at least from my standpoint here, it looks like it has stopped. But Doug, it's pretty cold down there, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. My hands are getting a little uh, cold down here, but just the excitement. You, I mean, uh, for the weather that's here, just to see the crowd that's here, it's unbelievable today, Jack. Okay, Doug, thank you. That report brought to you by the Ironwood Grill. Why not have dinner there tonight? We're 286 West, and the only setback in there is Morgan, and he is ridden down. <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot of... Uh, antics down there by Clint Forche out of Blairsville as he made the tackle flipped himself in the air and only gave up a yard to Morgan well, that was a good play by Clint because Bo Elliott was leading on a pull on that run and uh, Forche blew that up and then uh, made the tackle on Morgan for a gain of nothing second and ten Andy Valentine in the secondary out of McKee Sport he is joined on the left side by Brandon Roshowski we had talked about him earlier and from the gun, it'll be second down and nine, showing blitz up the middle. They come, IUP picks it up over the middle. The pass incomplete through it too quickly. Complaining Mobley that he was held a little bit. The official will have none of it. And it's third down coming up in nine. Yeah, Wachowski had good coverage. There may have been some contact early in that uh, route, but it was a good coverage across the field. And Crewatch telling Mobley, that was my fault. He, he rushed it just a bit and threw it wide of the mark. Three nothing, IUP your score. In the first period, running out of seconds, 66 of them left in the first period. Next week, Edinburgh here for 1 o'clock kickoff. Edinburgh in California still about 27 minutes away from their kickoff. The official coming over and telling the fans uh, someone must be using a whistle up in the crowd. He's looking at the home side of things, the IUP side, and saying no whistles being used here. All right. Wait. Third down and 10. Third and almost 10 to go for the first down. Free watch from the gun this time with protectors to his left and right. The direct snap. They're blitzing up the middle. The long pass downfield. Mobley's got it. Yes, he does at the 33. And they drag him down at the 28-yard line. Rashowski, he had to wait for that ball, but Mobley hauled it in. And it's a big gainer for the two freshmen again. 
That's why coaches prepare all week and watch film, Jack. rashoski has been the guy being picked on this whole first half for IUP. They've been going at him almost every time they throw the football. And uh, that time, just a beautiful, beautiful move put on him. Rashoski got all turned around, and Mobley was able to pull it in. What a nice play that time as uh, Mobley with the great move and a big game for the first down. 39 yards on the play. The ball is at the 28 of Slippery Rock. Three to nothing IUP. Norm Race in the fullback. The blocking back for Morgan. Morgan off the right side. Slithers through and then stretches to the 24 where Roshowski once again makes the tackle. Gain of four. Second down and six. IUP dictating the game so far. The good defense, the punting game, Four yards and less than 30 seconds to play in the first period of this homecoming game. Andrew Crewatch from North Allegheny. His stats are not that all impressive when you look at it as a whole. 40 and a half percent completion. He's thrown four touchdowns, seven interceptions, 759 yards, but he's made some real big plays. He gives it to Morgan again, can't go inside, goes down the sideline at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Chris Morgan found a little bit of room down the sideline for 24 yards. A touchdown. It's 9-0 IUP. Each and every week, teams are starting to get even more used to Chris Morgan. They get wake-up calls every week. When Morgan gets outside, he can turn it on and get that speed up the field so quickly. And he did that time. And what an excellent block to spring him. What sprung Morgan for that touchdown with Anthony Saletti cutting the linebacker that was chasing Morgan and had a good angle at him. But Saletti made a big block springing him for the six points. Whitaker with two seconds left. We'll put it through for the extra point, and IUP scores again and takes a 10 to nothing lead on Slippery Rock. Be back with a kickoff on AM 1160 WCCS, redzonemedia.com after these messages. It's time to seal the driveway. The new Indiana Agway has everything you need and it's priced right. The asphalt emulsion driveway sealer is only $8.99 for five gallons. It's easy stir, fast drying, rubberized, and dries to a rich matte black finish. Or get the asphalt emulsion, fill and seal for only $12.99 for five gallons. It has the same great features, plus it fills and seals hairline cracks and increases traction. The new Indiana Agway, 11th and Water Street, Indiana. People who know products you trust. People who know the products you trust. Hot subs, nachos, salads, and more. All made to order just the way you want them with a choice of 62 toppings. Sheets has what you want for dinner. So stop by tonight and get something for you and the whole family. Sheets. That's right. Sheets made to order. Not fast food, better food fast. 1160 WCCS. 10-0 IUP, Whitaker's kick is where going to end the first half. Favors at the 10-yard line to the 20, the 25. And he keeps on going across the 30 to the 35-yard line. That is going to end the first period. Slippery Rock will have it at the 35-yard line. But IUP has the lead after one quarter of this homecoming game. 10 to nothing IUP. You are listening to IUP football on AM 1160 WCCS and redzonemedia.com. This is Mark Burdick, general manager of AM 1160 WCCS. If your community group or organization would like notification of future job openings within our company, please write to Render Broadcasting at 840 Philadelphia Street, Suite 100, Indiana, PA 15701, or fax your request to 724-471-1050. Please include the name of your group, address, telephone and fax numbers and the name of the person and their email address, if applicable, that opening should be directed to. Render Broadcasting and your hometown radio stations are an equal opportunity employer. IUP salutes the super businesses, the IUP Alumni Association, Keystone Rehabilitation Systems, Sheets, s and Bank, Center for Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, PSECU, Emeritus Financial Services, Giant Eagle, Indiana First Savings Bank, Indiana Regional Medical Center, Luther Ford Lincoln Mercury, and Mark Arbuckle Nissan. Bank the best, IUP. 1160 WCCS. That touchdown drive for IUP. Five plays, 67 yards. 24-yard touchdown run by Morgan and Rocks back on offense. Yeah, they are. They take the option to the left side. Crookshank with the pitch to Nice. And Nice gets some yardage. Picks up about nine yards on the play to the 44-yard line. Terrence Jackson made the stop. 
Nine and a half, second down, about a half yard to go for the first down. Doug, we're down to you. Pretty good first quarter. Yes, it has, Jack. And uh, Flick, you're exactly right. Coasting Nettie after Chris Morgan's touchdown run. The first guy he congratulated was Anthony Saletti on that great block. He didn't even go in there, Chris Morgan. Victor Callahan was just out on that last play. He has a helmet problem trying to get that fixed uh, down here along the sideline. Jack? Play action. Crookshank second and short. He'll run for the first down across the 50 and overtaken by Guerra from behind at the 44 of IUP. Crookshank picks up the first down. That's where he has that ability to run the football. Yeah, and it's certainly instinct. When you have the amount of speed that he does and the quickness, Crookshank goes back to pass. Immediately, as soon as he uh, sees the receivers covered and he looks in front of him and sees that open gap, he's going to take it right away. He, he finds a hole, and then he exploits it and picks up a good first down gain. Nate Crookshank from Bishop Carroll. His alma mater still undefeated. Slot right formation. The handoff goes to Manful. He slips and he goes down after a yard pickup. Coming up was Dom Carnicella to uh, hit him and make the tackle. A one-yard pickup for Corey Manful. IUP dominating as we take a look at the stats brought to you by the dispatch in the first quarter. Uh, 118 yards of total offense. Slippery Rock with just 40 uh, prior to these last couple of plays. This time, Crookshank sends Paul Favors to the left. He has Golden as a slot right. He also has John Benka wide out from Hampton High School to the right. Now the man in motion he is Golden. Fake, trying to boot. Crookshank's in trouble. Now throws the ball away in That's grounding. That's grounding. There is no question. There's no, they're just linemen over there, but no flag flick. Wow. Incomplete. Good pressure by Lawrence and company. Sorry to interrupt you there, Jack. That's but all right. I kind of got caught up in things there. But IUP guessed right, coming hard uh, with uh, with Reed and uh, yeah, I think that was grounding. If I if you look up at the replay, I didn't see any other receiver in that general area. It doesn't seem to be too much of a complaint from the sideline though, so maybe they know something that I don't. Maybe Doug can check on that. Third and almost ten for Slippery Rock at the IUP 43. IUP leads 10 nothing. Crookshank true three receivers to the right. Throws a little screen pass to Manful. Manful has some blockers. Tries to filter his way. Is cut down. At the 33-yard line, Victor Callahan, Victor Callahan came over to make the stop for IUP. 34-yard line, maybe. And he seems to be short here. Yeah, they're going to measure again. Good job, Slippery Rock, that time. Anthony Guerra was getting held, by the way, but uh, nothing was called there. But they sent trips to the right, sent them all deep, and ran that screen underneath. Good call. Doug, down to you. Okay, f uh, Flick, on that last uh, play, there was Colin uh, Golden, number five, was in the vicinity. That's why they didn't throw the flag. And also, one thing Coach United stressed his defense in the locker room before the game is the running backs are known to fumble the football for Slip Rock, and also the quarterback is known to throw interceptions. So he kept on stressing it a couple times the IEP defense before the game. Jack? Yeah, that's exactly right. He's short of a first down, by the way. And as I mentioned earlier, Crookshank has had some trouble with INTs. He's thrown five touchdown passes, but he's been picked eight times. So it's fourth and about a half a yard here. Yeah, and the previous two times, Slippery Rock decided to punt. They were in their own territory in this situation. Now they're in IUP's territory. They're definitely going to go here as uh, the uh, crowd is starting to pick it up a bit here on homecoming. 10-0 IUP, second period, 12-56. Fourth down, a half yard to go. They are 45% on fourth downs this year. They have a big blocking back in the backfield, and Manful is also in there. As the offset backfield, Crookshank may keep it, only needs a half yard. He fakes to Manful. He pumps once. He throws the pass. Incomplete intended for Cremonese. Incomplete. They went for a play other than just the short yardage situation. And they took Cremonese and took him out of there. He had coverage on him by Quinton Cobb just off the fingertips. Yeah, and Cremonese was open early, but Crookshank couldn't get it to him because there was pressure in his face, and that's what caused him to pull the football back down. Good play fake. Looking to the left, was that Matt Scott? It sure was. Matt Scott was coming, and then by the time he was able to spot Cremonese, Cobb got over there to knock it away. Cremonese was asking for some kind of interference, but it was an excellent defensive play by Quinton Cobb. Yeah, it was, and IUP takes over at their own 34, leading a 10 tonight. Nothing, playing real solid defense here today. Lining up at the line of scrimmage. We watch uh, Tom Rogish on the video side. The uh, associate head coach of IUP. He was an All-American linebacker here back in the early 70s. NAIA. And he is talking with Sinclair Webb. 
along the sideline defensive tackle filtering his way through Morgan is spun down as he got a little bit of yardage out there not bad at all Clifford Simon a defensive back from Shenley High School made the stop the block tackle on Morgan five yard pick up to the 39 yard line second and five IUP moving right to left in the second quarter with a 10 to nothing lead good surge on the left side of the offensive front Dave living good uh, live and good pancaked his man and uh, allowed Morgan to sneak through there uh, I think it's time by UP starting to open up another can of Morgan he's gonna start getting hot here again as he does week in and week out two receivers to the right Soletti is to the left now Soletti comes in motion direct snap to Crewatch. second down play Andrew throws a long for Mobley has the ball inside the 30 yard line to the 27 yard line Rewatch Mobley, shades of Ironman Ocasio and people down through the years for IUP. Well, you know, Jack, that again, all timing. First of all, you must get good protection. Crewatch got that. He steps into his throw. Mobley runs the perfect route right in the hole, makes the catch, and gets the first down. The safety's late getting there. The corner's out of position, and IUP is at the 28 of the rock. They'll reposition and make it the 26 yeah. yard line now. As Cree watching, I didn't want to leave out Alucci and Jai Hill either. As I said, Ironman and Ocasio, all right? The great duos. The handoff goes to Morgan. He can't go left. He's coming back. And now he goes up the field. He darts in and out. He's going to turn the corner at the 25 yard line, gets to the 24. And all of that for what? Two yards? And it could have been a loss of seven. He's unbelievable. Jeez. Just to watch him run. And uh, he'll probably come out and. <laughs> Get a breather. I don't know if he's but, had a breather yet. I don't yeah. think they've had a backup in yet. O'Connor and Lestoki come out. Going in for IUP. There goes Pat McDaniel. <laughs> there you go. Pat McDaniel going in relieving Morgan. Yeah, I think he needs a drink after that run. <laughs> yeah. me, I need a drink just watching. That's water, ladies water. and gentlemen. <laughs> A gain of a yard and a half. Second down, we'll call it almost nine. Saletti is to the right. Mobley the slot left. And Oliver to the left side. Cree watch under center. Pat McDaniel, freshman tailback, is in there for IUP. 10-0 IUP. They show blitz that he panned off goes to McDaniel. McDaniel finds some running room. He cuts inside, and he keeps on going from the 20 down to the 16. Pat McDaniel is close to a first down. And Rock. Shosky comes over to make the tackle at the Rock 16-yard line. Tremendous block again by Dave Livingood. This offensive front is staying engaged with their blocks. That time Livingood pulled and really, uh, again, pancaked his man and a lot of running room there for McDaniel. He really didn't even have to uh, make any moves. It was just a straight run right through the hole and we look up here, I look on the replay side of things and watch again Livingood. This offensive line is really tremendous in, in this one. They they kind of are continuing where they left off last week with their good blocking. Just short of a first down by Pat McDaniel. And maybe because his name is Pat, but I was looking back in the IUP Almanac of this week and they were recounting long passes. And the longest in history is Ingle to Pat McCullough of 89 yards. A lot of that Pat did on his own. And he brings back some uh, memories of those two guys. Third down and about a half yard to go for the first down. We've got 11.27 to go, 10 nothing in favor of IUP over Slippery Rock. We're in the second period, and IUP has dominated this game. Going to line it up on the offset backfield, double tights for IUP. Crewatch leans in his big 6-4 frame, and now a flag is thrown. Let's see what this is. Yeah, is it in the middle of the pile? Is that where it was thrown? IUP, IUP indicating it's and against Pickens the are rock. saying yeah. it gets against Slippery Rock. Maybe uh, lined up in the neutral zone. Doug, what was it? Do you know? It was it was offsides against Slippery Rock. We'll see if that's what the officials say as well. Okay, offside Slippery Rock is what we get, and that's exactly right. So we'll take that five-yard penalty and a first down. Well, a touchdown here would be absolutely huge. You're already up 10 nothing in the first half. You've dominated this game. And you get 
down to around the 10 yard line again. You have first down. IUP can pick up a first down. Now the ball is at the 11, so they can pick up just inside the one, a first down. Remember Slippery Rock beat California last week, dominating the game, 28-25. Let me put it this way, dictating the game. So far, IUP has done that. And they lead it 10 to nothing. And a new set of downs for IUP. They're at the 12-yard line. The deep handoff goes to Morgan and a great defensive play tripped up and down he goes as Jared Palmer, the linebacker out of Pittsburgh, Shenley, second on the team in tackles, drops Morgan for a loss of two. Back at the 14. Now these backers, again, they're, they continue to blitz. And they're, they're trying to pick their spots, trying to see what IUP's lining up formation-wise to see which gaps they blitz. That time he guessed right, and he was able to knock Morgan off, off his pins. And uh, Morgan, right now in the game, rushing the football, Chris. Second down and 12 yards to go with the 14. 50. Slot left. Sorry, Jack. Is Mobley, but Crewatch calls time. He's just not comfortable. So a timeout, 10.15 to go, 10 nothing IUP. We'll take 60 seconds on AM1160 WCCS and RedZoneMedia.com. This is not a test. For a limited time, Luther Ford announces 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles, plus a 75,000-mile warranty, and tires for life, a $2,000 value on qualified vehicles to qualified customers. All credit applications will be reviewed. Their finance professional can buy credit risk. Limited time offers 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles at Luther Ford and Mercury, Homer City in Indiana, home of tires for life. The Diamond Drug Stores are introducing a new convenient service for your prescriptions. They can now package your prescription drugs on a blister card. The blister card numbers will correspond to a calendar. This convenient package will make it easier for you to tell if you've taken your pills that day. There's no charge for this service. This is just one more thing that Diamond Drug does to make your life simpler. The convenient service is offered at Diamond Drugs 841 Hospital Road at 670 Philadelphia Street, Indiana. They care about care. 1160 WCCS. We're back with you now. Second down, 11 IUP at the 13 of Slippery Rock. IUP attempting to put it in to pay dirt again. Back to pass, looking for Mobley, looking, nobody open. Pump fakes, throws it away. Smart move. Mobley was covered. Oliver was covered. Nobody was open. Andrew Prewatch throws it away and now comes up and he will talk to his two receivers, primarily Dianco Oliver. Yeah, and Coach Frank Signetti just grabs Oliver. He rang him <laughs> the, the wrong sideline. route. Didn't yeah, he? and uh, he, he he's going to be in the doghouse at least at least uh, for a couple of plays. Here's when you have to go back in there and say, "I need to get out of this doghouse, make a play." Well, they put him right back yep. in. Yep, that's what that's what you have to do. Just ran the wrong route, and uh, of course, Crewatch was upset with him too. But uh, this is a big third down for IUP. Third down, twelve. At the 13-yard line of Slippery Rock, IUP is up 10 to nothing. From the shotgun to Andrew Crewatch. They were showing blitz, and they do come. Protection, looking for Mobley, throwing long. That's too far. And yeah, Mobley made it down and out toward the far corner. The blitz was on by Slippery Rock. That'll force another attempt at a field goal here. Yeah, give Slippery Rock's defense a lot of credit. IUP moving the football, making it look easy, getting down to the 11. And then in three straight plays, IUP actually backs up to the 13-yard line. Well, Brad Whitaker will attempt again. He has kicked one already today, 37 yards, as long as it's 45 this year. And they're going to spot it at the 21, a 31-yard attempt. And now they're going to move it up, make it a 30-yard attempt by Brad Whitaker to put three more on the board. Mike Rary will be snapping. And Schaefer, uh, Mike Rary is holding. Schaefer is snapping. And the ball down, and it's blocked. The second one they've had blocked this year. Slippery Rock has the ball, and they stop that defense, and I think they're crediting Jake. No, no, it's not Barzin. Robert Minnie, Jack. Minnie is mm -hmm. the guy who blocked it. The 6'1", 280-pound senior from Monagahela and Ringgold High School. He just came right up the middle, did Minnie. And uh, gonna, going to uh, take a look up here at our replay. Minnie just kind of slid his way right through the middle, right up the gut, and blocked that ball. And again, a big bullet dodged by Slippery Rock. IUP really could have made things tough on the Rock if they would have put some points on the board. Yeah, could have given up seven, could have given up three, and the Rock gave up nothing. So Nate Cruikshank at his own 18 goes to work. His team is trailing 10 to nothing. He's got a solo setback in there, and that's Nisha again. Throwing to the left side, come back, incomplete pass. In and out of the hands of Paul Favors. 
he had it and then it uh, kicked out incomplete second and 10 at their own 18. This offense just not uh, able to get on track so far today. And again, we still have a long way to go, but uh, Slippery Rock, they average 25 points per game and uh, total offense is uh, about 364 per game. They're way below that uh, average right now as we are midway through the second quarter. Mike Chiapetta comes in, the veteran, out of Bethel Park as an extra defensive back. And they take out a linebacker, second down and out of the gun. The handoff goes to Manful, tries to go to the right, and he runs into Terrence Jackson, who drives him back about a yard or two around the 20-yard line. Outstanding play. Terrence Jackson, I watched him in the Altoona East-West All-Star game. He was playing fullback. And he could be an offensive player, but IEP's been wiped out, you know, before the season linebacker, so Jackson goes as an LB. Yeah, and Jackson just came out of nowhere there and uh, made a big stick, and then he wrapped up at the end. It didn't wrap up at first, but he was able to hang on, and Manfield went uh, backward on that play. Just 74 yards total offense for this Rock team this afternoon. Stats along the way brought to you by the Dispatch. Call 459-6100 for subscription. Third down, seven. Crookshank on the draw. It is Nice. Nice breaks a couple of tackles. He'll get a first down. And finally, Henderson in the secondary. And Matt Scott bringing him down at the 33-yard line. He picked up 12 on the play, and there's a case where somebody on the defense just didn't get a good hand on him. Yeah, and you hate to see that because it was third and seven, and they were backed up uh, deep in their own territory, but you're right, Jack. Nobody wrapped up there, and DeCidero missed the tackle at the 25, and then Nice was able to get over the lead stick of the 28 and then up to the 31. 12-yard pickup. 33-yard line of Slippery Rock alone set back. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. IUP up, 10-0 in this game. Nate Crookshank with the stretch handoff and lowering his head, coming through to the 37-yard line is Josh Neese again, tied to Sidero. The senior out of Catanning making the tackle for IUP. DeCidero, who at one time was a reserve for many years, came into this game as the number one tackler with 40 tackles on the year. Hey, Matt Scott was our player of the week defensively last week. He's also having a, a quietly having a solid first half. He's been in on a number of tackles, and he actually uh, made the play to allow DeCidero to come over and make that last stop for IUP. Wide to the left goes Luke Wetzel, receiver out of Bethel Park. A lone setback and a flanker to the right side. Second down, seven, Slippery Rock. Their own 37, Crookshanks to Nice. Nice stutters his way, finds some running room, trips and falls, and he's close to a first down at the 44. Flag. And we may have a flag, yes, and the indication from Coach Jim Smith on the IUP bench is it's against Slippery Rock. Doug, is that what you saw? Well, Jack, I'm down here. I, I didn't really see the play. I'm okay. down here talking to Johnny White here, the former IUP standout wide receiver. But, Johnny, real quick, what are you doing nowadays? Uh, I'm still in the Harrisburg area. I'm working as a sales rep with uh, overnight transportation. But I uh, thought I'd take the opportunity to come up here and uh, be here in spirit to hopefully see Coach Signetti win his 100th win. Good seeing you again. Likewise. Take care. Jack, we were even talking about the running, the game, feature game of the week, that Edinburgh game, and Johnny White was a part of it, and uh, he remembers, he said, yeah, Charles Peepers got the ball yeah. right there, the kickoff, and went this way with it. Yeah, he did, 98 yards, so good to see Johnny White once again. Uh, yeah, give him a wave down there. Johnny, good to see you again. Glad to see him back at IUP. Great receiver in IUP history. Second down, 15 yards to go. Back at the Slippery Rock 30-yard line. A solo setback. IUP leads 10 to nothing. And the fake handoff. Back to pass. Looking for favors. Long. And one-on-one. -on -one. Knocked away beautifully by Victor Callahan. What a play. Favors wanted interference called. But Callahan had great position. And with the left hand, knocked it away incomplete. Uh, he did have good position. There may have been uh, some grabbing late in that uh, route there by Victor. Uh, we upstairs here are going to look at it on the replay, but what a job to get that left hand in there because Favors had the inside advantage on Victor. He had him beat momentarily, but then the closing speed, he's so good at doing that. Even when he gets beat, he's able to close on the football and at least make an attempt to make a play. We saw a couple of times this year Victor not able to climb that ladder and uh, being out jumped for footballs, but uh, he, he's, he's Victor Callahan, and then and he makes the big plays, and he did there. Yeah, he did. Favors only at 5'10", more of a comparable size. Crookshank going to work on third down his bank. Back throws it over the middle. Diving catch, and it is going to be a good catch oh, no. at the 49 by Favors of Slippery Rock. It is a good catch. It is a first down. That's just the credit Favors with an outstanding catch if he held on to the ball. And 
Apparently, the official felt that he did. Thought maybe that ball bounced as he was coming down with it. Never had control, but they give him the first down. Of course, there's no replay here in this uh, Division II college football. Slippery Rock quickly up to the line of scrimmage. 7-10 to go. They trail IUP 10-0. Faking. Crookshank's going to run. No, he isn't. Terrence Jackson got him and drops him for a two-yard loss. Quarterback option that time and uh, nowhere to go as Jackson stays at home and makes the play. I'll tell you, Frank Cremonese, the Slippery Rock tight end, and Terrence Jackson, they've been going at it hard in this game. In fact, um, when uh, you, uh, Doug was talking just a little while ago, that holding penalty was on Cremonese. He not only held Jackson, but he also ripped his face mask around. The official didn't see that, and then they were just jawing at each other. That's a battle going on in the trenches today. Second 12 for Slippery Rock. Crookshank fakes, boots to the left, sets up, looks downfield, nobody open, pumps once. Runs to the right side. He's at the 50-yard line. No, he didn't get to the 50 because Terrence Jackson got him again. Right around the line of scrimmage. Jackson back-to-back -back plays. This kid is a comer. He's going to be very, very good. Uh, one of those great freshman prospects for IUP. Third and 10. They do give him the 49-yard line. Jack, in week one or week two, we don't make that tackle right there. That was just an excellent job of breaking down by Jackson because Crookshank is quick, and he saw that opening on the other side of the field, but you break down, and then you go make the tackle, and you wrap up, and that's exactly what Jackson did there. I think that's a great point, Flick. This team is getting better all the while. Scott is up front. Carnicella is up front. And also, uh, they've got uh, other guys with four down line. Here comes the pressure from Plowman, and the toss over the middle is caught. That'll be Favors in the first down. Jarrell Jackson made the hit on Favors. Favors' knee went down. We've got a flag, however, back in the vicinity where this could be a hold against Slippery Rock. Back at the 42. There's a flag down. Oh, interference. Yeah, the flag is against Slippery Rock. It's against Slippery Rock on pass interference, but the flag is all the way back where Crookshank threw that football. And uh, the interference call, that, that puzzles me. Usually that is downfield. This is back at the point where Crookshank threw. Maybe Doug can Doug, can you explain what that's it. about? I, I mean, I don't know either because the referee threw the flag, and I've never seen a referee throw a flag behind the line of scrimmage there and call interference unless he just gave the wrong mechanics. We'll see here what he says here. Oh, uh, it's blocking the back. Yeah. That, that makes more sense. And Jack, Johnny White wants to send his best to you on your 400th victory as well. Or 400, not victory, 400th game. <laughs> okay, I wish it would be 400 victories. <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate that. That is an illegal use of the hands. I get Slippery Rock back to the 39-yard line of Slippery Rock. 5.44 to go till halftime. 10-0, IUP leading and duking it out with Slippery Rock. How big of the penalty? was that because that was a completed pass for a first down on third and long and now it's called back for another rock penalty now it's third and forever here's another dispatch stat courtesy of mike hoffman six penalties called against slippery rock crickshank is back pressure he's going to unload it long and incomplete double coverage now they had two receivers wetzel and favors right there and anybody will tell you that somebody did something wrong on a route because you never have two receivers that close fortunately iup had two defenders there yeah they ran trips and henderson and jackson were both on the coverage you're right jack there's something going on offensively slippery rock not in sync and both receivers were in that area and uh, we were just i was just hoping that the IUP defenders wouldn't get out, jumped for the ball, and then Chiapetta came over also to make the play. Chiapetta and Jarrell Jackson, the veteran safety and cornerman for IUP. And here is Rotel to kick to Saletti, who stands at his 25-yard line. Fourth and long. The snap is to the right. Rotel does have it. His kick is not real good, but it takes a slippery rock bounce, and it will still stay in bounds. And he got some good yardage on that up around the 20-yard line of IUP. Let's take a little break. IUP 10, Slippery Rock nothing. We'll step out for this 30-second timeout on IUP football. The co-op store in Indiana is your IUP homecoming headquarters with special homecoming hours. Friday 7 till 5, Saturday 8 till 6, Sunday 10 till 3. Get free apples, lollipops, and drinks. Save 10 to 50% off select IUP clothing, 20% off IUP imprinted gifts. Join the IUP women's basketball team at the co-op store to raise awareness for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. Check out IUPstore.com for details. The Co-op Store, your homecoming headquarters in the Hub Complex on the IUP campus. 1160 WCCS. Hand off to Morgan, and he'll get a couple of yards off the left side from the 20-yard line up to make the tackle. 
was Clint Forche and Jerome Whiting to make the tackle. Forche out of Blairsville, played for Abby DeTore, who played here back in the mid-70s at IUP. And Abby's team rolled on last night over Purchase Line. They are 6-0. and oh. A gain, actually, of only... Uh, no, it's a loss of a yard. I'm sorry, my fault. It's back at the 19. It's second and 11. Here we go, out of the I formation. Fullback is Norm Raisin this time. Here comes the blitz. Crewatch threw it away. Whoa, nobody there. How about that for intentional grounding, huh? There wasn't anybody there. He got away with it. He sure did. I think Slippery Rock got away with one, too. See, that's what they're pleading on the on the sideline of Slippery Rock. You can see their coaches. Yeah, the coaches on looking uh, on their on their sideline, the far side of the field. But that time, Jerome Whiting, the middle backer, came from the left side to the right and just blitzed right up the B gap right after a Cree watch. Nobody picked him up. It was kind of a disguised blitz. And it wasn't kind of. It was a disguised blitz. And Cree watch had to get rid of it. 4.28 to go till the half. IUP 10, Slippery Rock. Nothing from the gun. The quarterback is Cree watch. Two receivers to the right. The handoff goes to Morgan. Starts inside. Now he finds some running room. And he comes on out across the 27 to the 27-yard line. But they'll be forced to punt. And Rary will be in to kick. Fontana making the tackle on Morgan. You know, some may think that was a conservative call upstairs, but it was an excellent call, I thought, because the clock continues to run. Slippery Rock not taking a timeout here. You move the football out, you get some yardage. There's another whiff on Chris Morgan. He just runs by people. So IUP does get out of the uh, doldrums of their end zone just a bit. They need good coverage here with Nice, who returned, man, he is excellent. The kick is low, lying driver taken at the 38. Now he'll come to the left side, 45, and a good tackle by Jarrell Jackson stops Nice at the 46 of Slippery Rock, and there is a flag thrown. And it's upfield, too, from where that uh, kick was made, so this uh, could be maybe an ineligible man downfield. Doug, you have something on it? Yeah, I think it's going to be another late hit call against Slipper Rock on uh, Jim D'Amico, number 46, because the umpire is right there and threw the flag after the whistle was blow. He blew. He gave a shot to the IUP player, so Slipper Rock's just killing himself so far with these uh, penalties. Yeah, they are, Doug. That's about seven penalties here in the first half now for 65 yards is what we're told. Yeah, another personal foul takes Slippery Rock back, so the excellent field position won't be so excellent. Oh, and we'll take it, certainly. Slippery Rock converted that, that big third down. They were all the way down inside the IUP 25-yard line. That got called back, and uh, now good field position nullified again on a penalty. And, you know, that's called discipline on your football team, and this coaching staff on the other side of the field right now, they have to be pretty upset about the way their team is playing is from a discipline standpoint. 10 nothing IUP, 3.42 to go till halftime. Homecoming, Slippery Rock on their own 32-yard line. They send the band in motion in Wetzel to the far side of the field. Nate Crookshank takes it, stops, looks, throws over the middle. Kremenis, the tight end, has it. Tackled by Lawrence from behind, but Kremenis, the big tight end from Latrobe, takes it all the way down to the IUP 40-yard line and the gain on the play of about 28 yards. Now somebody blew a coverage that time because Kremenis was wide open, lined up on the uh, left side and uh, Kremenis just released off the line and right up the field. Nobody was able to stay with him. Jackson was out in his hook zone and I believe, uh, I'm not sure whose man that was, but uh, Kremenis gets a big gain. Two receivers to the left out of the gun and the give is to Nice down after a yard or two. Tied to Sidero again. And Rob Plowman, transfer out of West Virginia, who hails uh, high school-wise out of Kiski area. Gain is two, second down and eight. They're at the IUP 38 with three minutes to go. 10-0 IUP. And amazingly enough, in this game of football, it only takes one breakdown to get a team uh, that's deep in its own territory into your territory. One breakdown late in the half is not uh, good for IUP here. Favors to the left, two receivers to the right. Play faking, looking for favors. Sideline pass. Did he ca have a foot in? He did. He makes the catch or not? Are they going to call it good? They are calling it good at the IUP 24. And another first down. He made a 
nice toe dance along the sideline. He sure did. That ball came in high, too, and favors on the far side. Uh, we are going to look at that up here and see if he did get both feet down. Nice job coming, or one foot down, and uh, to I me, it was too hard to tell. Even on the replay, it looked like he did get one, the right foot in. 14-yard pickup to the IUP 24, 242 to go in the half. 10-0 IUP, the Rock is driving. Out of the gun, Crookshank fanks to Nice, and then runs into Desidero, hugs him and brings him down at the 21. Three-yard pickup, Desidero's all over the place today for IUP. Yeah, that time Crookshank, again, running that quarterback option. He could do one of two things there, obviously. That's why they call it the option. Give Denise or keep the football. That's the second time he's decided to keep the football in the last couple of drives. Both times he's been stuffed for a minimal, if no gain at all. Coming up at halftime, the IUP quiz. I mentioned that at the time, the 89-yard pass play from Ingold to um, Pat McCullough was the longest, but actually it's not the longest in history. We'll tell you what it is at the half. Winding up, Crookshank looking. Nobody's going to tuck it in. He runs and he runs into Terrence Jackson again, who drives him back, and boy, DeSidero came over. No whistle had blown, and Crookshank is down. And look at my Dr. George Mahalik and the coaching staff out on the sideline. They're calling for a late hit. I mean, they're all the way out on the field. Well, actually, Jack, late in that play, a whistle did blow as Crookshank was already given, getting driven back and I think it was DeSidero who laid the final knock it was. on him. And uh, luckily, IUP did not get a flag there. We don't have sound on our replay monitor, but uh, I do know it was a good hit initially by Jackson, and he wrapped up. And The quarterback is still up. Jackson has him wrapped. Here's the hit. And then DeSidero comes in and makes the hit. Okay, they ran uh, their backup or their wide receiver, Banka, in there. Crookshank is going to go to the sideline. He'll be checked out by Dr. George Mahalik, who right now is pointing not only the finger but the program into the face of the referee down there. We have a minute 45 to go. We'll hold it right here. Well, anytime you have your quarterback out there getting hit like that and put in vulnerable situation, uh, as a coach, you know, that's that's your, <laughs> well, they've that's your taken, baby out there. They've you know? taken him out. Yeah. Ryan Hart is in. Ryan Hart is the backup quarterback out of Cochranton. He is a redshirt freshman. He has Nice behind him. 145 to play in the first half. Things are starting to heat up. But the referee is not in play yet, so he can't play ball yet. And now they're going to call timeout. Frank Signetti is questioning over here about the clock. You know, he's going motioning like get yeah, the clock going. Right, because he was inbound, so the clock should be running. And now finally the official puts it in play and starts the clock. Wide to the left side. The wide out over there is Benka. To the right is Golden. We've got Nice behind the quarterback. Ryan Hart on a third down play. Hands it off to Nice. He is tackled by DeSidero, but picks up a first down near the 11-yard line. Well, now it's time for the IUP defense to stiffen and try to uh, hold Slippery Rock to at least a field goal try. You know, IUP coming out in this game and just dominating and scoring those 10 points. Chance to get more. They didn't do it. Now Slippery Rock late in the half, a chance to get right back in this one. And Crookshank is back in the game with a minute 22 to go. He deploys Colin Golden to the right, split receiver to the left from the 11. The handoff is to Nice, can't go inside, tries to go left, slips a tackle, slips everybody and goes into the end zone for the score. And Slippery Rock is on the board on an outstanding run of 11 yards by Josh Neese. And it's a 10-6 game here with 70 seconds to go till the half. That's what happens when you don't wrap up. And that time Neese makes a good run and we don't wrap. And that leads to a touchdown. A good stutter step move at the line of scrimmage. Terrence Jackson misses him. And uh, then into the end zone as he bowls over a man for the touchdown. And it's starting to get heated down there. There's no question about that. Guys talking left and right. Look out second half. Yeah, we're going to have a, some kind of wild second half. This guy's perfect. 15 for 15. Ryan Daniel. And he kicks it through. And so 68 yards on the touchdown. 110 to go. And 11 yards by Nice. It's IUP 10. Slippery Rock 7. You're listening to IUP Football on AM 1160 WCCS and RedZoneMedia.com. Hey, what'll it be? Uh, whatever's on special. Excuse me, did I hear you right? You didn't order my Jenny Light? Who are you? I'm Jenny, and clearly you haven't heard about the Jenny Light taste test. When we gave beer drinkers a blind taste test, here's what happened. This is much better. This beer's definitely got more flavor to it. I like the taste of that one better. See what I mean? I didn't know. Besides, if you don't choose my Jenny Light, you will never, ever get into my party. Let the party begin! Distributed locally by Mistretta Distributing, Homer City. 
Water Haven is a destination in your mind created by a combination of unique water delivery components, a dual shower with seven adjustable water ports, two telescopic shower arms, four body sprays, and a personal hand shower. Create a different experience, invigorating to soothing each time you step inside. Water Haven brings balance to your life. Stop in at Penn Stand Supply, 1050 Philadelphia Street, Indiana, your Kohler showroom, to discover the versatility of Water Haven for yourself. 1160 WCCS. High kick down. Majors across the 20, 25, 30 to the 34 yard line. With a minute three to go, the tackle was made by the kicker, Ryan Daniel. Well, we've got a game once again, Doug, and what a second half on tap, huh? Oh, exactly right, Jack. And you know, the temperature just heated up about. 10, 15 degrees down here on the field because of the uh, two sidelines. They, it's, it's, they're into it now. Maybe not at the beginning of the game, but right now both staffs are into it. And wouldn't uh, be any other way with IUP Slippery Rock. Our sideline reports brought to you by McGill's Car World, Wayne Avenue South, Indiana. Clean low mileage pre-owned vehicles in the Ironwood Grill with a variety of beverages and great food, steaks, seafood, chicken, pasta. The handoff goes to Chris Morgan. Chris Morgan is down to the 39-yard line and a gain of five for the former star out of Woodland Hills. IUP in a hurry-up offense with 50 seconds and counting, trying to get into position maybe to get a field goal. And the last time down, coming up empty with a blocked field goal, made a difference. Low snap, Cree watch back. He's getting pressured, and he is in the grasp, and he goes down. Number 51 fighting off the defender, Corey Lasik. Pittsburgh North Hills with a sack. It is his fifth of the year. Yeah, Jason Warning just got beat badly on that uh, particular play. And that sack on Crewatch causes Slippery Rock to take a timeout because they still have, uh, what now, 20, one or two timeouts seconds? remaining. Yeah, and uh, maybe take a chance if you just put IUP in a fourth down situation to go after a punt, something uh, to that extent. But Doug had mentioned how the the uh, tempers are starting to flare and are starting to heat up down there. The guys who weren't quite sure if, about this rivalry before the game, they know what it is now because... Uh, got, got some scores here, the PSAC update, and Flicky can bring us up to date. On, we'll hold it here in the booth. Yeah, just looking on the replay up here as Warning gets beat on the sack. 17-7, Shippensburg leading Lockhaven. That's in the third quarter. East Stroud all over Clarion, shutting them out 35-0 in the second period. Uh, third period scored, Mansfield 28, Cheney 17. Westchester leads Millersville 20-7 in the third quarter. Bloomsburg 6, Kutztown nothing. That game in the third period. And Edinburgh and California going to be getting underway. They're, they're they are underway. underway for about yeah. 15 minutes. We have no score, no report on them yet. We have 30 seconds, actually, that they put up on the clock. And IUP has the ball at their own 30-yard line, third down and five. They lead in the game. IUP does 10-7. And the momentum has changed a little bit here. After now, IUP calls a timeout. Yeah, Cree Watch didn't have the right personnel on the field. He throws his hands up in the air and just need to relax right now. There's It's strange you come out of a timeout. You don't have the right <laughs> personnel. <laughs> It happens, yeah. But it can happen, huh? Mm -hmm. Next week, it's Edinburgh here in a 1 o'clock kickoff. In two weeks, we go to Lockhaven. Three weeks, we go to uh, Clarion. And November 5th, California comes here for your games of the future. And uh, oh, a little basketball reminder. The IP men's basketball team is going to scrimmage the Pitt Panthers on Sunday, November 3rd at 2 o'clock at the Peterson Event Center. Let's get down to Doug for an update. Doug? Okay, Jack, the only thing I heard Coach Signetti say, hey, that's the safest handoff you can have right there, so expect a running play. They're going to, if they can't get the first down, they're going to make Slip Rock burn another timeout. 30 seconds to play in the half. We'll get a comment or two from Coach Signetti before they hit the locker room. The IUP Valeski's 4th Street Market quiz coming up at the half. And people are still standing around. The officials are huddled between the two teams right at the ball talking about something maybe about what they're going to have for dinner jack this evening on this homecoming day uh, they're indicating to the indiana bench i think how many timeouts it has iup has one slippery rock has two so here we go finally all right and morgan is the tailback lestoki the fullback Third down five, IUP. 
at their own 30-yard line. And the handoff goes to Morgan. He finds a little hole for two yards and then goes down. What's, what's happened there? Capizzi got pushed around. And afterwards, I guess just some extra blocking by both teams. Two yards, and Seth Randall make the tackle. Fourth down, and here comes Rary. And they've got to watch. You know, last week, special teams did it. This week, they got the blocked field goal attempt. At the half. Yeah. to set them up. Leo Wood, big last week. This week, it was uh, IUP getting their field goal block. That was uh, Zambrano who blocked that. And now IUP will have to punt here, and Rary will stand around his own 20-yard line. The Rock will have 10 on the line of scrimmage to start. Texas leads Oklahoma 24-6. to Here we go with Rary standing his 20-yard line. 10 men ready to rush for the Rock. Nice is back. The snap takes a while. It's not a good kick, but it should take an IUP roll that does along the sideline to the 30. Nice is rocked as he just gets short of the 35-yard line. And that's where Slippery Rock will put it in play. The tackle was made by, I think that was uh, Swearinger, or was that? No, Spiegelmeyer. Chris Spiegelmeyer making the tackle. 16 seconds to play in the half. We'll keep it here in the booth. A couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned on one of Rary's punts, he came off the field limping because he extended that foot before he actually made good contact with the ball. He did the same thing on that punt, Jack, to cause it to go end over end. Luckily, though, he kicked it toward the sideline, so there wasn't much of a chance of any return there. It is a day which is uh, chilly, very chilly, around 50 degrees, not raining, but uh, very cloudy. And we are approaching halftime. We've got the snap to Crookshank, and he gives it on the draw. And up the middle, Nice with big, big yardage. Runs it on out to the 50, to the IUP 49-yard line. And a pickup of 17 yards on the play with seven seconds. Henderson and Quinton Cobb coming up to make the tackle. 16-yard pickup. Of course, the uh, clock will not start until they get the stick situated, but Slippery Rock will still take their third and final timeout. Well, let's see if they go with a play action and go for the home run ball. Yeah, I don't this think they'll be fooling anybody if they go. If they do try anything play action, they may just take a couple of steps and really heave it up there. Look at the uh, previous play upstairs here. I was going to check with Doug, too. Doug, isn't this about the position of the ball and the famous Hail Mary pass? Yes, it was, Jack. It was the 49-yard line. And I still say that there was uh, no time left. I think the clock stopped the one second when it clearly should have ran out. Uh, okay. Hmm. I know I looked up there at... I know it had 23 seconds up there, then uh, went to 30, and now it's down at 7. And of course, we want to say happy birthday to our head coach, Frank yeah. Signetti. Birthday today. Just made the announcement today is head coach Frank Signetti celebrating a birthday. Really not thinking about that he, now. He's you know? not thinking about that because we've got <laughs> twins to the left, one to the right. Here comes Crookshank, and he's going to throw short. Diving catch. Two seconds on the clock, but it's no good. Incomplete near the 35. And it gives them another play, though. They tried to do something short there just to pick up some yardage so Crookshank will be able to throw it to the end zone here. Probably could air it out 49 yards anyway. But uh, we'll probably see the Hail Mary here. I doubt if uh, Dr. Mihalik will want to go anything but uh, liberal here on this play. He was, a great, fly. he was a great quarterback at Slippery Rock in the mid-'70s when IUP had Lynn Heber. Dr. George was doing his thing up there at Slippery Rock. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, out of the gun with two seconds left, and IUP up by three. Here we go, last play of the half. Crookshank gets a block, sets up, and loads it up for favors. Knocked away by Andre Henderson to end the first half of play. This should be some kind of second half coming up. Well, let's go down to Doug Steve with head coach Frank Signetti. Doug? Okay, thank you. Coach, first half, you had that 10-0 lead. It looked like you're you right on the doorstep, and uh, it looked like the Anka ran the wrong pass route, but uh, it's a ball game. It's a ball game. Believe me, it'll be a four-quarter ball game. We had great momentum going to that point, and we had a little smash called with a narrow route underneath, and he blew it. Dionco is supposed to come under, freeze the corner so we can get the corner out behind him, and he blew the route. So then they block a field goal, and that was a big momentum changer. I thought defensively we played great up to that point. So we got to solidify defensively, take these passes away from them. Offensively, we got to get the rhythm back. We're not doing a good enough job running the football offensively. We got to make the run go better. Okay, they are uh, coaching Nettie, and uh, we'll see what adjustments they make for the second half. Jack? Dina. 
1160 WCCS. Let's take you down to the field and let's pick up on Doug Steve. Doug? Okay, thank you, Jack. And, uh, you know, as I was walking out after the half here, the referee stopped me and said, you're not coming out to uh, for the radio here at the half here. I said, no, it goes good because I have to tell both these teams a few things. So, you know, the officials talked about trying to keep, keep this game under control here in the second half. Offensively, IEP wants to get the running game going. Don't be surprised to see something sometime on first down a reverse play. They feel that could be a, a good call. Also, in their second and long, the, the thing they're having trouble with is picking up the blitz from Slip Rock on second and long. So they have some pass plays that they feel will work, even a tellback screen in that situation. Paul Tortorella told the defense, hey, guys, it's all about attitude right now. Coach Gennady told the team, he said, guys, the team with the biggest heart will win this game. We must get the running game going. This game is about momentum, and right now they have a little momentum on us. Let's get it back here to start the second half. Jack, flick.
Uh, score here of 10 to 7 as IUP leads in this game over Slippery Rock and we get ready for the third quarter of action here and uh, IUP on homecoming uh, going up against the uh, Rock Ball Club leading it by just three points kicking off will be Dano and he is kicking from left to right, and the deep man for IUP will be Dianco Oliver and Garrett Majors. So here we go, the second half under cloudy skies. IUP leads it by three, and the kick is high, but it's to the far side of the field, over to the four-yard line, up the far sideline, 10, 15, 20. Oliver comes out, spins out of a tackle at the 30-yard line, and he's down around the 31-yard line. 27-yard return for IUP. And yeah, then Leo Wood got spun down there after the play, and... Uh, no call. Leo was looking for one, but that's just going to be the way it's, this second half's going to shape up. It's going to be physical. It's a three-point game with IUP leading, and they get a good kickoff return to start the second half. IUP 32-yard line, and they are in this game by three points. Tanner Whitaker is the center. Alive and good, and Bo Elliott, Warning, and Capizzi are up front. Andrew Cree watch. North Allegheny freshman at quarterback hands it off to Chris Morgan who tries to turn the corner and he can't do it over there. There is a flag around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it looks as if IUP is going to be called for holding here. Wachowski comes over to make the tackle. The momentum shifted in this game after the blocked field goal. And Slippery Rock kind of took it away. Although IUP has a three-point lead, Slippery Rock fans cheering over there. I see the umbrellas are up on the Slippery Rock side, so it must be raining a little bit anyway. Maybe it's raining on their side, not on our side. That's possible. Up here, anything's possible. I guess so. Here's the call holding against IUP. 
How many penalties did IUP have in the first half? Uh, IUP had... They had, uh, I think Slippery Rock had seven, didn't they? IUP only had two for ten two. yards. So that's yeah. their third penalty. And they had seven? Seven. Uh, yep. Seven for 65. Well, there's the call. Back to the IUP 22-yard line. And they must get to the 42. 20 yards to go. First and 20. Handed off to Morgan. Goes left. Goes in the middle. Cuts it right up the middle of the field. Comes across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Picks up the 11 on the play. Outstanding running following his blocking by Chris Morgan. And Jerome Whiting making the tackle. He played for Penn Hills, his high school ball. Slippery Rock fans across the way unhappy because their defensive back, Akeem Etheridge, at the end of this play, at the end of that, that last play, and I'm looking up here on the, on the replay, got hit and knocked out of the uh, pile and nothing was called. But again, it's one of those things where uh, the officials, they know it's going to be physical, but uh, that was a hit, late hit there. <laughs> Flank to the right, split end to the left. They showed Blitz and now backing off. Now here they come. Cree watches back. He has a lot of time. Over the middle, Mobley is open, drops the ball. It was thrown behind him just a little bit, but again, Mobley showing his freshman inconsistency. He'll make some big plays, and then he drops some easy plays. Yep, you said it. Jack, uh, he's dropped a number of those already this season. So wide open for a first down. Would have had the football at midfield. Crewatch does a good job of stepping into this throw after play action. The blitz is picked up, but you have to have everything working to make that uh, completion. And it was Mobley that time that just didn't get his hands up in time. Second down, make it third down. Third down and nine at the 33 of IUP. IUP leads 10-7. Again, Slippery Rock showing blitz. Now they back it up. The pressure's on, and the screen pass incomplete intended for Chris Morgan. And that was not a good series for IUP. They'll punt it away. And Slippery Rock's Josh Niche will be returning. Now Slippery Rock received this football to start the game, and IUP's defense shut them down on their first possession, three and out. Slippery Rock returns the favor to IUP here to start the second half. Mike Rary punted three times for 32 yards. The longest was 37 in the first half. Fourth and nine at their own 33. Rary just barely got it away. On the near sideline, takes a bounce, picked up at the 28, and coming back to the 36, 37-yard line is Josh Neese. That's where they'll have it. So they're going to take the ball. Slippery Rock will for the first time in the third quarter. IUP leading 10-7. Man, Brad Potts down there just uh, grabbing just in case there were some penalties there. Spiegelmeyer was jawing with one of the players and Potts just went over and grabbed him and now he's telling him, hey, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm just trying to keep you from getting a stupid penalty. Brad Potts, former linebacker, volunteer coach with IUP. The handoff on the deep handoff goes to Nice and they bounce him around pretty good. Number 25, Quinton Cobb came up to make the tackle on him. Josh Neese picks up a couple of yards on the play. At the another, 39, second and eight. Sorry, Jack, another freshman, Cobb, 5'9", uh, and just uh, 190. He comes up and hits from that defensive back spot. He's not afraid to put a lick on you. He did there. Going out is uh, number five, Colin Golden. And coming in is Benka, John Benka. He is a split receiver to the left, favors to the right. They've got a fullback in there and the fake to him. Crookshank on the option. The pitch goes to Nice. Nice is across the 45. He's up near the midfield stripe. Gets to the Slippery Rock 49. Picks up a first down on the play. Never did go down. Tied to Sidero among those. Making the stop for IUP. It's a first down for Slippery Rock. And very well executed that play as Crookshank just pitched that ball at the last minute. Got good blocking down the line of scrimmage. That's what you got to look for. You have your own read. Uh, for the uh, keeper pitch, and that time he read pitch, and it was a good one because they pick up a first down. We'll get to Doug in an update. Ball is right on the 50. Paul Favors is to the right, slot man inside him. And two men in the backfield, the H-back and Nice as your star running back. He has the ball. He slants for three yards, maybe two yards to the 48 of IUP. Let's go down below to the sideline and Doug Steve. Doug. Okay, thank you, Jack. How focused is Coach Nettie during the game? As we were walking out at halftime after, after I interviewed Coach Nettie, him was ran smack dab into a, an individual. Here is his wife, Marlene. He didn't even flinch at all, didn't make any comment, just kept on walking up into the locker room. Jack, flick. Second down and just over seven yards. It's second down and seven yards to go now for IUP. 
for a slippery rock against IUP. Second down and uh, let's uh, about seven yards to go. 12.08 to go in the third quarter. Crookshank throws that pass in a hurry. They've got a first down. IUP can't bring down the receiver to the 35-yard line. That pass was so quick, I don't even know who caught it. Favors. And he takes it to the 35-yard line of IUP. And it is, uh, no, it's Golden who made the catch, not Favors, number five instead of six. He really got rid of that ball in a hurry. And the ball is a uh, first down and 10 at the IUP 35-yard line with under 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. 10-7 is the score. Slippery Rock is driving. IUP has the lead. Flanker to the right, two receivers to the left side of Nate Crookshank out of Bishop Carroll High School to Josh Neese. DeSidero's got him. He's in on so many tackles today. Had help on the play. Didn't get much, but DeSidero, what do you have in the first half? He had six tackles, so that's his that's his seventh, uh, actually his eighth tackle uh, in this football game. Yeah, he's he's doing a good job of moving around and uh, making himself active and filling the lanes. Right now, Slippery Rock picking up uh, just a couple on that play. IUP's defense trying to stiffen with a three-point advantage. Crookshank will send favors to the right. Wenso is a slot inside him, and Golden over here trips to the right side. Crookshank hands it off to Nice, and he's inside the 30, 25, up the middle of the 20. He's headed for a touchdown, and Josh Nice goes the distance, 33 yards for the score. Slippery Rock has taken the lead at the 10:57 mark, 13-10. Once Nice broke the line of scrimmage, he made an excellent cut back up the field. Uh, he he was able to get back up to the middle and then just outraced the IUP defenders for the touchdown. Good blocking downfield by the receivers of Slippery Rock. That was uh, Luke Wetzel who threw a big block for Nice. Well, Daniel is perfect on the year and he tries for his 14th point here today and he adds it. Slippery Rock has gone 63 yards for the score. They have taken the lead for the first time today and a 14-10 lead of IUP. We'll be back with a kickoff on AM 1160 WCCS, redzonemedia.com after these messages. This is not a test. For a limited time, Luther Ford announces 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles, plus a 75,000-mile warranty, and tires for life, a $2,000 value on qualified vehicles to qualified customers. All credit applications will be reviewed. Their finance professional can buy credit risk. Limited time offers 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles at Luther Ford Lincoln Mercury, Homer City in Indiana, home of tires for life. Home comfort isn't just the temperature in your house. Home comfort is also about the quality of air in your home and how it makes you feel. And you should know that Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning carries Lennox Healthy Climate products that can help you rid your home of dust, dirt, pollen, and stale air while reducing growth of harmful organisms. See Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning, 1075 Philadelphia Street, Indiana, your local Lennox dealer for improving the quality of air in your home. 1160 WCCS. Dianco Oliver hauls it in around the nine yard line up to the middle of the field across the 25 and at the 28 yard line. IEP now trails in this game 14 10 at the 10 51 mark. Slippery Rock doing in his second half what IUP did in the first half, getting the football on uh, their first possession and moving it and then scoring the touchdown. Six plays, 63 yards, two minutes, 50 seconds. And now the Rock, who trailed 10 to nothing at one point in the first half, now have a 14-10 lead early in the third quarter. Nice with two touchdowns has seven on the year now. I formation, IUP's got to get this offense in gear. And a handoff goes to Morgan into the center of the pile. Nowhere. They hit him. They gained tackle. Whiting and company knocked him back and dropped him right around the line of Clifford Simon. They've got a lot of players from Pittsburgh Shenley on this team for Slippery Rock. And loss of a yard for Morgan, who in the first half, let's see what he had in there. He had 16 carries for 66 yards. Yeah, one thing I'm noticing, Slippery Rock doing a lot of slanting on that defensive line. Most of the time they slant, uh, slant to the strength side. 
Total offense was 172. IUP 197 for Slippery Rock in the first half. Back to pass. Crewatch gets away from one or two. He's going to try to run, and he's down right around the line of scrimmage. Crewatch goes down, and he had nowhere to go. Forche and company making the tackle for Slippery Rock, and their defense is stepping it up. They sure down. are. They're boxing him in. That time, a safety blitz, free safety coming. And they're just not enough men to block these guys. And that's what's happening. Pre-watch was able to get out of there and get a few yards out of it. But uh, third down and long for IUP. We'll get an update. Doug, down to you quickly. Okay, Jack, I know you and Flick were talking about all the great IUP games in the past. The one thing that's missing is that intense crowd, the vocalness in the crowd. We don't, I don't, we don't see that anymore here at IUP. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> I second. Third down. Back to pass. Cree watch over the middle. Caught by Mobley this time, and he does have a first down at the 42. He didn't drop that one. Cree watch hitting. There is a flag, and that may be roughing the passer. Yeah, it's right around where Cree watch ended up. No, no, no. It looks like it's going the other way. It's holding. Well, IUP going to look here on the replay. Couldn't really see where the hold was, but the official was right on top of it. And again, now it's almost like a role reversal. Slippery Rock hurting themselves in the first half with penalties. And after picking up first downs, IUP does it on this drive after Slippery Rock takes the lead. Well, all the way back to the 19 of IUP. 9-16 third quarter. The Rock now with a lead, 14-10 over IUP. And Cree Watch. Had a rough first half. Soros uh, Crookshank was 6 for 17. Andrew was 5 for 11. Saletti is to the left. Two receivers to the right. From the gun, Cree watch awaiting the snap from center. Here comes the blitz up the middle. They picked it up. Now the rush is on. Gets it away. Intercepted at the 45-yard line by the Rock. They're coming the other way with it at the 30 25 down the sideline at the 20 and around the 18 yard line. The interception was picked off by Jim D'Amico. I didn't say it this week, Jack, because the last two times I did, Cree watched through a pick, but in my head I'm thinking third and, and very long, you know. You, you, <laughs> the blitz was coming, like you uh, said, Jack, once again, and he was hit as he threw by Forche who's had himself another nice ball game. And Mobley was the intended receiver, but nowhere close to Mobley. Slippery Rock knocking at the door again after the turnover. And all the way down to the 14-yard line, here comes Crookshank to Nice. A flag is thrown. Nice is driven back and loses yardage. That may be a hold against Slippery Rock in the middle of the pile. One of the coaches on the Slippery Rock side claiming face mask. It's going to go against Slippery Rock. 10, 14, 10, Slippery Rock leading it in the third quarter at the 837 mark. Two teams undefeated in PSAC Western Division action. California had a lead, a slight lead over Edinburgh in their game in the first period. And Jack, there's a long way to go in this one, but we talked about special teams and the importance of Leo Woods' block punt that changed the momentum last week. Think about the uh, blocked kick today right. by Robert Minnie. That uh, turned things around right there. Yeah, they've made some big special teams plays in the last few weeks. Ball is back at the 24 of IUP. Crookshank with trips to the right. And he bumps into Nice, drops the ball, picks it up, starts to run for his dear life, and goes out of bounds. A couple of IUP players in the Slippery Rock end ran into one another over there. But they bumped. It was like, pardon me. And Crookshank, good enough athlete, picked up the ball and started to run with it. And he moved it to the 23 of IUP. It's amazing to watch some of these guys on the field, guys like Crookshank and Morgan for IUP, when they look like they're bottled up. And that was just a busted play when they ran into each other, Nice and Crookshank. He looks like he's bottled up, and he still is able to turn the corner with 11 guys chasing and pick up one. Second down, 19 to go to 24 of IUP. Crookshank under center again, trips to the right side, and the solo setback is Nice. They fake. Back sideline pass. That's caught. 
And that is Cremonese, and Cremonese is to the nine-yard line, and it's goal to go for Slippery Rock. Boy, he's a nice big target. He's a pretty good player in high school. He was an excellent player in, in high school, and that's what he did. I mean, he used his frame to his advantage. He made some catches, used to stiff-arm people. He was just a hard-nosed player, and when he caught that football, uh, he delivered a blow. He didn't take the blow. He delivered the blow on, uh, I believe it was Henderson down there. So third down, big play for the IUP defense again in this one. Yeah, let me make a correction. They needed to go to the five, so they're four yards short of a first down. It's third and four, about four, maybe five, as they're around that nine, ten-yard line. The uh, stretch handoff goes to Nice. He slants off the right side. He's near the six. Josh Nice, eight minutes counting, third quarter. Slippery Rock threatening again after the interception, leading 14-10. Decision time for Slippery Rock. They do have a good percentage on fourth down, although today they uh, missed out on a fourth and short, and they're going to send their field goal unit on the field. It is actually fourth and about two, so they're going to try to take the three points here and go up by seven. 24-yard attempt here. By Daniel. Ryan Daniel is 5 for 8. Daniel has hit a 49 yarder this year, and he's trying from 24 yards out to put three more on the board. The snap, the spot, and the kick is no good. Off to the left. He missed it. IUP still has life. Down by four. They'll take over at their own 20 yard line with 7 17 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, well, that's surprising. Yeah, that was pretty easy, and he missed it. Especially coming in uh, to today, he was 5 of 8, and from that distance, he usually hits, but that's what happens. Not much of a wind blowing down there right now, though, Doug. I don't think that affected it, did it? No, it didn't. He just hooked it right from the uh, right hash mark there. 20-yard line of IUP. Our sideline reports brought to you in part by McGill's Car World, Wayne Avenue, South Indiana. You can get cars, trucks, vans awaiting your inspection. Great selection down there, of course, to all your favorite cars. Wayne Avenue South, Indiana. It's McGill's Car World. Slippery Rock up by four. IUP needs to get some offense going, and they hand it off to Morgan. Morgan is swiped at, tries to turn the corner. He's cut down around the 20-yard line or so. It looks like a Slippery Rock player shaking up a little bit. And he is injured. There is a Slippery Rock player injured on the IUP sideline. Baraducci made the tackle, and he's down. 7-11 to go, third quarter. Slippery Rock 14, IUP 10. Let's take a timeout on AM 1160 WCCS and RedZoneMedia.com. The co-op store in Indiana is your IUP homecoming headquarters with special homecoming hours. Friday 7 till 5, Saturday 8 till 6, Sunday 10 till 3. Get free apples, lollipops, and drinks. Save 10 to 50% off select IUP clothing, 20% off IUP imprinted gifts. Join the IUP women's basketball team at the co-op store to raise awareness for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. Check out IUPstore.com for details. The co-op store, your homecoming headquarters in the hub complex on the IUP campus. Your kids mean a lot. One's headed to college, another will be driving soon, and it can be a bit overwhelming. That's why you owe it to yourself and your children to see the family at W.G. Meckling Insurance Agency. The Meckling Insurance family knows how important it is to insure your young driver, and with all the things kids take with them to college, it's essential that you're covered for these items, too. Meckling Insurance cares about your family. Call W.G. Meckling Insurance. You're not just a number with them. 1160 WCCS. Well, the freshman hook up again. Free watch over the middle, caught by Cameron Mobley across the 45 to the IUP 48 yard line. A 27 yard pass play. And again, Cree watch got good time there. And that time, Slippery Rock showing blitz and pulling back, but uh, Mobley was able to run a good route all the time in the world for Cree watch. And he delivered a nice ball right there at the 41 yard line. They'll call a 26-yard play to the 47 of IUP and a new set of downs. Under seven minutes to go in the third quarter, IUP trying to move the ball, trailing by four. High formation, Norm raising the fullback, the fake to the tailback. Free watch in the pocket, look out, gets hit from behind. Let's it go, but Oliver's open. He's got a five, touchdown. Free watch with a touchdown pass of 53 yards to Dianco Oliver. Took the hit 
gets up limping. IUP has regained the lead, 16-14. And that's exactly what happens. You want to bring the blitz. That time, just a, a, a move downfield by Oliver. He didn't go to the out. He kept staying straight down the field, and that allowed Crewatch to step into his throw, and Oliver just outran the defense. He literally outran him, and for the touchdown, for the second time today, Wyshowski has been burned for a touchdown. Crewatch gets up uh, gingerly there. He's over on the uh, sideline now on the bench. Whitaker to add the 17th point, and his kick is good. So IUP regains the lead. And it's another IUP slippery rock, a classy game here, and finish shaping up. The Indians lead it by three. Be back with a kickoff on AM 1160 WCCS, redzonemedia.com in 60 seconds. If you have a small to medium-sized business, you have to work extra hard to keep overhead low and the quality of your customer service high. Now, thanks to Chestnut Ridge Communication Services and Avaya, your business can benefit from all the advantages you thought only larger businesses could afford. Whether it's a phone system upgrade or voice and data integration, Chestnut Ridge Communication Services services can custom design and implement a communication system that will work for you today and allow for growth tomorrow. Chestnut Ridge Communication Services builds their solutions around Avaya's state-of-the-art products and systems. So you get solutions that are so powerful, they smash just about all of the barriers that come between people, networks, and systems. Call Chestnut Ridge Communication Services today at 1-800-257-1983. Ask about their top-of-the-line Avaya products and special offers or visit them on the web at crcinc.com solutions that can give your business a competitive edge we're back with you in a hurry and here's the kickoff and it's taken by favors fumbles the football after he goes down now was he down or not Whitaker going for the ball recovering for IUP the IUP sideline is jubilant they're going to call it a fumble I think they are, and it's going to be IUP ball on the kickoff return by Favors. Slippery Rock is complaining. Whitty yeah, Whitaker recovered it. <laughs> you got Whitaker it, Jack. Recovered. I was waiting for you to say that, yeah. Brandon Lawrence, I believe, made the hit on uh, on Favors. Lawrence stripped the football, and uh, on the TV side, we're looking at it right there, and he does strip the football. Now, it did look like Favors, from our vantage point, to be honest here, looked like Favors' knees were down, but there is no replay. And Whitaker comes up with the football. Not only does he recover it, but he recovers it the way you're supposed to recover a fumble. He doesn't fall right on the football. He cradles it, and IUP gets it back. And the ball's at the Rock 46. Now, the thing I'm looking at is Favors. He went down, but his body hadn't hit the ground because there was a body under him, a right. tackler. Doug, down to you. Okay, Jack, the officials stop the game real quick. They, uh, Brad Whitaker forgot to go get his tee after he recovered that fumble, re uh, fumble recovery. But one thing that IEP has been exploring here on second and long is the middle of the field because it's wide open if they can pick up the blitzes. Jack, flick. Hey, I'd like to know with that tee deal, where's Johnny Angelo when we need him? Here is the ball handle. It's on the reverse to Oliver. Dianco turns the corner to 45, down the sideline to 40. He's at the 30s, down at the 20, gets across at the 15, headed for the touchdown! Dianco Oliver on the reverse, goes for the score, and IUP has struck again against Slippery Rock, 23-14. He had one man to beat, Troy Steininger, when he turned the corner. He did that with ease, and then he was one on one down the field all he did was cut it back and when Dianco gets the motor going he can fly again Slippery Rock trying to run all types of blitzes that time they ran away from the reverse and Steininger was given chase and right by him goes Mobley up the field turning on the Jets for the big six Boy, this game has turned around has in a hurry. It ever turned around in a hurry, that's for sure. And the Rock doesn't know what hit them. Of course, delay, game. Number 45. delay of game called against Slippery Rock. Number 40. What did he, Doug, do you know what he did? I think he took the football and that must not have given it to the official after IEP threw it up in the air, so they called delay a game. But that's one of the plays that the IEP offensive coaches felt they could get was a reverse on first down. They had it in perfect position. What a turn of events here down here in the field. Yeah, absolutely. Whitaker to add the extra point. Whitaker's going to be tuckered out. He kicks an extra point. He recovers a fumble. He kicks another extra point. And that brings us up to date. 6.16 to go. And the score is 24 to 14 in favor of IUP with a 10-point lead. 
Dianco Oliver with a reverse, making it 24 to 14. That was a 46 yard run by Dianco Oliver. And IUP, as we'll hold it here in the booth, has uh, taken it up a notch, and the crowd is finally getting into it, and Capizzi and company getting the crowd into it. I thought Capizzi was actually going to get up into the stands. He was going to come over by the fence. Again, uh, with Slippery Rock being so active with their backers, IUP, that was a great call on first down, and then run that reverse against those blitzing backers, and that takes the whole middle away. There's nothing there, so if the defensive tackle, defensive end doesn't make the stop, it's up to the corners. They got good blocking downfield. Oliver used his speed, and it all equals a touchdown, and IUP trailing 14-10 to 10 just about five minutes ago, now lead 24-14. Thanks to Dianco Oliver, uh, Whitaker and company. The ball is fielded like a ground ball back at the eight-yard line by Favors. He filters his way through across the 25 and is tripped up to about the 30-yard line. Helping out on the tackle was Pat McDaniel for IUP. He limps off the field a little bit. And it is Slippery Rock ball. They were up 14-10 all of a sudden. It is 24-14 IUP. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. line of Slippery Rock at the 6-11 mark. We are in the third period. Yeah, it mind you, a long way to go in this one, but IUP, who had the momentum in the first quarter and a half, gains it back again here in the second half. They'll line it up with Nate Crookshank, hanging the ball off to Nice. Nice follows his blockers, gets some good blocking as he pushes it on out across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Six-yard pickup, second down and four. Plowman helping out on the play for IUP. And if you're Slippery Rock, you're not going to push it here because there's still plenty of time left. In the uh, third quarter, there's 547. You've got a whole nother quarter to play, and they're down by 10 points. Slippery Rock with three losses on the year. One to one double-A Youngstown State. They blew a big lead against Bloomsburg. Out of the eye, the handoff goes to Manfield. He bounces outside, tries to turn the corner, stiff arms Cobb, and then Jarrell Jackson forces him out of bounds near the 40-yard line. That's what you call team defense because Cobb was not going to bring him down, but he was able to string him out to the sideline to allow Jackson to come over and finish it up. And Jackson was able to stop him shy of the first down. So it's going to be a third and one for Slippery Rock. And the ball is at the Rock, 39. They do have a yard to go for the first down. Two receivers to the right, an offset backfield with an H back in there. Crookshank will roll to the right, sets up, wants to run, and does get a first down. And now he gets outside at the 50s, down the sideline. Jarrell Jackson is chasing him. Crookshank turns it on inside the 30, and he's all the way down to the 23-yard line of IUP. Crookshank, who's an excellent athlete, went to Georgia Southern as a baseball player, turned it on, and legs it on down to the 23 of IUP. Wow, Matt Scott had a shot at Crookshank. He just could not quite get off of his block as Crookshank was coming back to the middle. You'll see, uh, we see up here Scott fighting, but Crookshank too fast. And once he gets outside, he gets the big gainer. This one's not over no, yet. No, this is going to be one of those. Some, it, it really is. We are in the midst of a, a real thriller here in the third and could be the fourth quarter. A Slippery Rock down by 10 is pushing again. They're at the 23 of IUP, and the handoff goes to Corey Manfill. He finds a little bit of running room, shakes a would-be tackler in Lawrence, and then goes down at the 17. Cobb coming up to make the stop for IUP, and Plowman also helping out. Manfill getting some yardage there. They use this guy. He fills in beautifully. 5'11", 197 out of Kensington, Ohio. Gain of six. Yeah, both defenses coming into the game have played well in the uh, past weeks, but it's like kind of off and on, which switch is on and which series. Right now, the on switch is on for the Rock offense. IUP's defense uh, not playing real well right now. Golden in motion to the left side of the field. Back to pass, and the toss incomplete. Was it deflected? I don't know, but it's incomplete because the pressure was on by IUP's plowman who knocked over not only the quarterback, but the blocker who was protecting the quarterback. Yeah, IUP likes to run Quinton Cobb on that corner fire, and that's who blocked that pass. That if was he Cobb. Doesn't, yeah, it's going to be complete. Third down. But Golden couldn't get to it, so Cobb makes another big defensive play, and now it's third down. Third down coming up at the IUP 17. Four yards for the first down. 
Third quarter shows IUP 24, Slippery Rock 14. Crookshank takes the snap, rolls to the right side, looks, throws, almost intercepted by Cobb, bounced off his chest around the 13-yard line. Backside pressure by Plowman, who is bent over right now. He's okay. I think he's out of breath. He put pressure on Crookshank. Incomplete. He's he sure did, and that's what caused Crookshank to throw the ball early. But also, he expected Golden to come back to the football there uh, or, or keep coming across. Golden stopped, and if Cobb makes that pick, he's gone. There's nothing but green ahead, but he couldn't hang on. Daniel will be in to attempt the extra point. Uh, extra point field goal. 35-yard attempt it is. Try and get three more on the board. Ryan Daniel has missed one today. The snap and the spot in the kick. He's got a lot of uh, high arc to it, but he missed another one. No, no good. Off to the right this time. And Slippery Rock has really made some boo-boos here. Chances to get on the board. IUP with the momentum takes over with a 10-point lead. Back at their 20-yard line at the 329 mark. So another bullet dodged for this IUP team. And... Now they get it, and offensively right now, now you're going to try to control the football, you know, not make any stupid mistakes, but at the same time, you don't want to go too conservative. Do what you've been doing and what's been working for you, and uh, they're going to try that here in the third quarter, late in the third. Ten-point lead IUP with the football now. Here comes the blitz again. Morgan gets the ball up the middle to the secondary. Breaks outside at the 30, 40, 45, 50-yard line. Gives a stretch. He's down the sideline. He breaks another tackle. He's going to go to the house. Touchdown, Morgan. 80 yards. Chris Morgan takes it all away for the score. 80 yards. And IUP scores again. I have never in my lifetime seen a run as electrifying as that when you talk about what Chris Morgan and his size can do. So quick, Morgan gets into the secondary, gets outside, and then you call to Jack, just a stiff arm, blows right by the defender, and then turns the Jets on again. I mean, how, how can you stop like that on the stiff arm and then accelerate again? Chris Morgan can do it, and the extra point is good. IUP, wow, they've and put it on a finally clinic becomes here a hot dog night in Indian. Oh, finally we get a hot dog night on homecoming. Look out, sheets. 31-14 <laughs> IUP with a 17-point lead at 316 to go. We're going to be back with a kickoff on AM 1160 WCCS, redzonemedia.com, right after this timeout. It's time to seal the driveway. The new Indiana Agway has everything you need and it's priced right. The asphalt emulsion driveway sealer is only $8.99 for five gallons. It's easy stir, fast drying, rubberized, and dries to a rich matte black finish. Or get the asphalt emulsion, fill and seal for only $12.99 for five gallons. It has the same great features, plus it fills and seals hairline cracks and increases traction. The new Indiana Agway, 11th and Water Street, Indiana. People who know, products you trust. People who know, products you trust. Krebs United Publications, heat set, cold set, web color printers, offering the highest quality in printing and free press. Direct mail and advertising circulars. Krebs United Publications, 1163 Water Street, Indiana. Krebs United Publications. And we're back at George P. Miller Stadium, and the kickoff is taken by Favors. He swings to the left, swings to the right. Now a flag is thrown as he comes up across the 30-yard line. An electrifying run by Chris Morgan. Did I hear them say he now has 1,198 career yards? And an 80-yard spectacular run with Whitaker's extra point. It's 34-14 and another flag. Well, Doug, we wanted people to wake up. They're awake. i tell you what, unbelievably, sir. I mean, uh, the turn of events here, and you know, as the league grows, more of the alumni football players down along the field here, Lewis Choice, Omar Studer down here, and you know, I asked Omar, I said, Omar, weren't you a part of that, that game of Slip Rock with Andre Hill Hilliard? And he just started laughing. He said, that was a great one. <laughs> that was a great one for IUP, not so good for Slippery Rock. And our reports from the sideline, courtesy of the Ironwood Grill. You can eat out there on the deck. It's heated, covered, beautiful place to be for homecoming. Maybe you have reservations later on today. Slippery Rock, after the uh, penalty, illegal use of the hands, way back to their 10-yard line. IUP is up 
31 to 14. Nice gets the ball into the pile and he'll move it for two yards on a slant to the left. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Scott. Scott coming in to make the stop for IUP. How about this? I mean, Slippery Rock took the lead in this game, 14-10. And then IUP scored at uh, the 639 mark, the 616 mark, the 316 mark. What a quarter, the biggest quarter of the year. And they have taken a 17-point lead on the Rock. They've got an H-back situation in there. Receiver to the right. And the pitch goes to Nice. Nice trying to turn the corner. It's bounced hard out of bounds around the 16-yard line. Quentin Cobb again making a nice hit for IUP from Susquehanna Township, the Harrisburg area. He likes to trash talk, but uh, he backs it up. And if you, <laughs> if you can back it up, uh, you may be able to do a little bit of that stuff, but just don't let it get out of the hand, especially with a lead like this. You have to watch out for the stupid penalties now. No personal foul penalties, things like that. Just know where you're at and know the lead you have and try to keep it. And it is third down on a direct snap to Crookshank. They've got movement because the clock didn't run out. And they're starting to make some more mistakes here. Oh, well, offensively, I don't think they really had any type of rhythm all day. I mean, they had it at one good drive here to start the second half, but penalties have hurt them. And I heard 11 penalties against the Rock today. Mike Chiappetta comes in the secondary. He's a fifth back. Brandon Lawrence checks out. Ball is at the 11-yard line of Slippery Rock, third and nine. Crookshank from the gun. Sprints to the left side, sets up, looks long, and has a man open. It is caught at the 40-yard line to the 50-yard line. Chiappetta knocks out of bounds. Luke Wetzel. And the big play as they got it on the IUP secondary all the way from the 9 to the IUP 43. 48 yards. And that was Wetzel's first catch of the day. And, you know, how can that happen? I don't know. IUP coming with a four-man front. And Crookshank got a lot of time to throw that football, but nobody really within a couple of yards of Wetzel. And then he was run out of bounds, but a big gainer, big play for Slippery Rock. To the 43 of IUP. Crookshank again to the air. Short pass caught by Favors. 35 breaks a tackle. 30, 25, 20. And he's down to the 16-yard line where Andre Henderson wraps him up. But IUP missed a couple of tackles. Yeah, Quinton Cobb is one of them. Not going to be talking after that play, Jack, because he just whiffed and uh, Favors ran by him and picked up some extra yardage. He gets that very important stat, the rack yards, run after the catch, and Slippery Rock knocking on the door now, trailing 31-14 with still plenty of time left. 26 yards on that play to the IUP 16. Crookshank is winding up a little bit here, starting to hit some of his receivers. 148 to go, IUP by 17 in the third period. Man in motion, Golden. Crookshank drops the ball and dives on it. Back at the 18, the exchange from center, not good. And a good, uh, again, it wasn't good. That's the rhythm thing I'm talking about. That they're just, they can't put one together where they continue to move the football, gets first downs and score. And that right there shows it. First down, you have a good opportunity. You fumble the football on the snap. Sh uh, center quarterback exchange. Chris Morgan down here stretching out his legs on the bench. Mike Campolo talking with him, assistant coach. Man in motion, second down and 11 at the 18. The fake, the pass, caught, and Golden breaks another tackle. Broke that tackle by Mike Reed, and then Reed comes back to help to make the stop by Brandon Lawrence. But the ball's down around the 12-yard line of IUP. And again, up third down now, Flicks. That's just not wrapping up. I mean, you have him in your sights. He's right there. He runs the out pattern, and Reed drops to his zone, and he's late getting there, and he just dives and whiffs. He doesn't wrap up. Half a minute to go in the third quarter. IUP by 17. The Rock threatening again. Three-step drop. The fade. Corner incomplete. Too far. Victor Callahan one-on-one -on, -one on Luke Wetzel. Yeah, they try to match Wetzel up with Callahan. Wetzel a lot 
taller than Victor, and Victor right there with him. He'll always be there with you. Sometime he may lose the uh, the jump, Jack. You know, he may be out jump, but he'll always be right there with you as far as running down the field. Now Daniel's going to try another field goal. He's missed two today. 29-yard attempt this time by Ryan Daniel. He's 5 for 10 on the year, 0 for 2 today. 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The snap, the spot, and the kick. And that one is good, making it 31-17. So they went uh, eight plays to score that, 78 yards. And a 31-17 game. We'll hold it here in the booth with Daniel and making that extra, uh, making that field goal with 18 seconds to go in the third period. But a good job by the IUP defense just to hold the rock there to three points, still making it a two touchdown game. That was the most wild and woolly third quarter we've had all year. Doug will hold it right here. We'll take it down to you, but IUP scoring three times very quickly. And and we finally, we finally got the crowd going, actually, as you mentioned, Jack. And there's a lot more excitement in the stands. But, you know, you talked about uh, Quentin Cobb there. He made that great hit along the sideline deep when Sleeper Rock had the ball, but then he got beat on the long pass, and he missed the tackle. You know, it's still a freshman. He's going to have his uh, learning experience. But, you know what, I kind of feel bad for the Sleeper Rock coaches over there, Jack. Okay, Doug, we know you're all heart. Thank you. And the report brought to you by McGill's Car World, Wayne Avenue, South Indiana. Here's the kick. The kickoff taken on the far side by Oliver at the 10 up to the 20, the 30, and still going across the 35 and on to the 40-yard line of nearly a 30-yard return by Dianco Oliver, one of our candidates for player of the game today. Don't forget on the post-game show, the Bill Thompson State Farm Insurance Players of the Game. You better believe it. These special teams coming off the field right now have to be proud of themselves the way they've played today. They've made some big special team plays. Of course, Slippery Rock blocking that IUP field goal in the first half uh, wasn't so good, but the returns today, they've averaged uh, well over, unofficially, 30 yards of return. That's excellent. And with one play left in the third quarter, Andrew Crewatch goes to work. His team leading, 31-17. I formation, Crewatch back to you-know-who, Chris Morgan, into the pile for about a yard. They try to steal the ball from him, but that wouldn't work, and we'll go to the fourth quarter. Nice lead, but it's not over yet. IUP wants this fourth quarter as they lead it. 31-17 over Slippery Rock. You're listening to IUP football on AM 1160 WCCS and RedZoneMedia.com. Want the perfect companion on a Saturday morning? This is Bill Otto, and every Saturday morning from 9 to noon, I play the best music from the roots of rock and roll. Give things away, take your requests, and let you know what's going on in Indiana County. It's the best three hours in radio. A three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. Join me from 9 to noon every Saturday for the Oldies Attic, only on AM 1160 WCCS. This is not a test. For a limited time, Luther Ford announces 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles, plus a 75,000-mile warranty, and tires for life, a $2,000 value on qualified vehicles to qualified customers. All credit applications will be reviewed. Their finance professional can buy credit risk. Limited time offers 0% financing on pre-owned vehicles at Luther Ford and Mercury, Homer City in Indiana, home of tires for life. 1160 WCCS. Fourth quarter action, homecoming. IUP 31, Slippery Rock 17. First play, play action. Crewatch back in the pocket. Let's it go long down the left sideline. A little too far for Dionco Oliver. He can run, but not quite that fast. Too much of a lead incomplete. He was double covered, Jack, and Akeem Etheridge was trying to run with him. Boy. Oliver has shown me today more speed than I thought he had. I mean, I knew he had good speed, but... Yeah, he's, he can wide. run. Some stats here on the uh, dispatch statistics. IUP with 9.8 yards per play. That's what they're averaging in, the, in this game. Of course, the big plays here in the third, uh, third quarter just ended really made a difference. And here we go on the next play and carrying the football. Pat McDaniel running the football, and McDaniel moves it to the IUP 49-yard line. 
with a gain on the play of eight yards. That will be short of a first down. D'Amico has an interception today, made the tackle. Mike Reary will be in to punt for IUP. Rary kicking to Josh Neese. Both quarterbacks have heated up here in the second half. Crookshank now 12 of 24, 188 yards. Crewatch is 7 of 16, a touchdown and 186 yards. Cameron Mobley, three catches for 100 yards. Here's Rary, and it's a low kick, and he goes down, and there's going to be a flag. He's hurt. Rary's down, writhing in pain, apparently, and it's going to be roughing the kicker or running into. We'll see. He gets up limping. The ball goes the other way. Zeisloff roughed him, and no matter what it is, it's going to be a first down because if it's running into the kicker, it's a five-yard penalty. IEP was just a yard shy of a first down anyway. We're going to take a look up here at the uh, replay monitor, and... Uh, it looked as if he was tangled up with an IUP blocker and Rary just got dumped. Couldn't really get a full view of it on the replay. Here's the referee. No foul. No foul. Well, Good then you, you saw it better than... So I guess the acting job didn't work is what we're saying. Yeah, the, the coaches are still upset. Coach Rogic is upset. They may have seen something that I didn't. I don't know if we're going to get another look at it, but it seemed as if that was one of those incidental... Two guys engaged, blocking, and just kind of ran into him. Although a lot of times you do get that call. Here's some other stats for you on the Bob. Uh, brought to you by the dispatch. Golden has four catches for 33 yards. Chris Morgan, 21 carries, 158 yards. And Nice has 20 rushes, 133 yards. Both Morgan and Nice with two touchdowns. All right, here we go. Ball is at the 18-yard line of the Rock. They trail in this game to IUP, 31-17, and the fourth quarter to go. Nice scary football. He finds running room and loses the football. Up for grabs in front of the Slippery Rock bench, but Slippery Rock got it back. I have no idea who recovered it. And let's see who it is. It's uh, 68. It was one of the linemen in there, recovered by no, the center, Miles Arnold. Wow, that would have been... Devastation for Slippery Rock there after they get the big gain by Nice. Let's go to Doug. Doug. Okay, Jack. You know, I was talking to Mike Rary and I said, Mike, you're tougher in high school than you are now. He said, Well, I had to do a little acting there to try to sell him. You know, he really is not hurt that much. He just tried to get the call, which he almost did. Almost, but not quite. Victor Callahan forced that fumble. And here's some finals. Six. Final Shippensburg beat Lockhaven. Mansfield beat Cheney. Final Bloomsburg 12, Kutztown nothing. 12 nothing at Bloom half, over Kutztown. 14 12. 14-12 Cal leads Edinburgh at the half. That's the big game in the Western Division, and that's being played at Cal. Kutztown must have played some good defense today. Only, yeah. Allowing 12 to Bloom. It's a first down for Slippery Rock. They have the ball at their 27-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. 13-43, IEP 31, Slippery Rock 17. The biggest quarter of the year, the third quarter for IUP, scoring three times in electrifying fashion. Uh, it is a second and one. A little flanker screen, it's first down to Golden. He's out to the 33-yard line, tackled by Garrett Majors. Brandon Lawrence made the tackle. No, I make correction, it's Brandon Lawrence, 34 instead of 24, on the tackle for IUP. Did the crowd go to sleep all of a sudden? Or yeah, yeah, they were up there oh, okay. during that flurry, but... All right. We'll get them going again. Flavor favors to the right, three receivers to the right. Nate Crookshank takes the snap and rolls to the right. He's sprinting, he's looking, he's looking, he's pumping, he's looking. And now he's going down because he should have run out of bounds. He wouldn't have taken the hit back at the 30. You make a great point, Jack. Right? Why hey. not run out? Why take a hit? In the amount of games as you've done over the years, that was a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, they're going to call it a sack. So who gets credit there? Well, that may be a team sack, okay. so they split it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half and half, yeah, because they call it a sack. At the 30 and a half of Slippery Rock, IUP Second makes defensive changes. Foul. Lawrence and Cobb come out. Majors and Chia Petta go in. Second down and 12. Trips to the left side for the Slippery Rock team. Play action, back and looking throw into coverage. And incomplete. 
Wow, almost a catch by Luke Wenzel. He turned around, he leaps. He's in among three IUP defenders. If he catches that ball, he shouldn't have caught it. He should have been covered a little bit better, I think, because really, but he dropped it incomplete. Yeah, Jarrell Jackson was back there, and he got his hand up, and in the face of Look how Wetzel, many IUP but, defenders. Yeah, three defenders, and Wetzel, when he hit the turf, that's when the ball came out of there. Nobody really converged on him. They just kind of waited to see what he was going to do. Trips to the left side, Slippery Rock, third and 12 at their own 31. Crookshank is back. Here's the screen. Tanise, he has some blockers across the 20, 35. And, oh, wow, he took a hit. Andre Henderson with the kiss at the 38-yard line. Oh, I would like to be kissed that way too many times because uh, he can hit like a truck, I'll tell you. Between he and Terrence Jackson today, they've, they've made some big sticks. Cobb also, there's been some hitting going on all day down on this field, and it's going to be some sore bodies tomorrow. Standing at his 25-yard line, they'll punt it away. We watched it again on the replay. Yeah, Jarrell Jackson took two big offensive linemen down, and uh, that that helped. <laughs> Here is uh, Rotel in to kick. Uh, Ro Rotel does kick it away. It's not far. Near sideline, out of bounds. They'll line it up at the 27 of IUP. We'll hold it here in the booth. IUP 31, Slippery Rock 17, 11.33 to go. And I think Doug has something for us. Doug? Okay, Flick, you know, you just mentioned those names, Cobb, Jackson, Henderson. Those are all freshmen. We should be hearing those names for many years to come here at IUP. Just uh, great the progression they made defensively this year, and if the offense can do the same thing, it should be some fun years coming ahead. That's a good point. Some, sometimes we... We forget their freshmen were out there watching them play, and then it's amazing some of the things they can do. Well, because of the, the events in the offseason, spring ball, and everything else, and remember, we're talking freshmen, not redshirt freshmen. Pat McDonough into the secondary. 35, 40, 50, 40. Can Pat go? Run, Pat, run. He's going to go for the touchdown. Pat McDonough goes to the house with 11.21 to go, and the little guy scores for IUP. <laughs> And he gives the flex in the end zone, Jack. He <laughs> finally gets in, and he flexes his muscles. Great run. Once he was into the secondary, that's when uh, Pat McDaniel can display his talent. And that is just flat-out speed. Great blocking up front. Whitaker, live and good up there. Capizzi, and so on and so forth. Good blocking by the receivers and up the field. Once he hit midfield, he just started breaking away from the pack. 73 yards. Whitaker's extra point is true. And IUP is having its biggest day of the year. 38 to 17 over Slippery Rock with 11.21 to go. Happy homecoming so far. We'll be back with the kickoff on AM 1160 WCCS and redzonemedia.com after this timeout. The Diamond Drug Stores are introducing a new convenient service for your prescriptions. They can now package your prescription drugs on a blister card. The blister card numbers will correspond to a calendar. This convenient package will make it easier for you to tell if you've taken your pills that day. There's no charge for this service. This is just one more thing that Diamond Drug does to make your life simpler. The convenient service is offered at Diamond Drugs 841 Hospital Road at 670 Philadelphia Street, Indiana. They care about care. 1160 WCCS. Back with you at George P. Miller Stadium. IUP scoring again on the touchdown run by Pat McDaniel. And now taking the 38 17 lead. Slippery Rock had gone ahead here in the third quarter, early in the third quarter, with their long drive, 14-10, but since then it's been all IUP with big plays. What a tremendous second half, and they're just carrying over here in the fourth quarter what they did in the third quarter. We're finding all kinds of stars today. There's Whitaker's kick down to Favors, back at the eight, comes to the center of the field, now up to the 20-25. Stutter steps, goes out across the 30, and he's to the 38-yard line. Paul Favors is a real good-looking athlete here. He is a uh, Pittsburgh Perry product. He's just a sophomore. And Majors making the stop for IUP. Doug, that's pretty excited sideline down there. Yes, it is. And how many one-play drives is that for IUP today? Two or three? I mean, that's no way to get the defense some rest. Yeah, it does it ever. That's right. That took 12 seconds, by the way. 
is what they're telling us up here. Ball to 40 in the air. The pass to Golden. He's down at the 43 by Brandon Lawrence. A gain of three. Brandon Lawrence. And what makes it nice now defensively, not only do they get a breather for a change, but uh, now they get to kind of roam around free here because you know what Slippery Rock has to do. Now they cannot afford to keep the football on the ground. They have to go to the air because time is running down. We're under 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and they trail 38-17. Keep this in mind. IUP came into this game tied for first in the West with Slippery Rock and Edinburgh. Edinburgh is losing, so is Slippery Rock. There is a flag thrown, and the pass is thrown to the 50, and it's incomplete. Flag. That flag is all the way by the Slippery Rock. Where did it come? It looked like it came out of the stands. Well, the official threw it from midfield all the way down to the 30. That was one of the best throws. flag throws I've ever seen. <laughs> flag throws. Yeah. That's what we could have. We could have an, an, a flag throwing contest. They're talking what do you think, to Doug? Captain DeSidero down there. I, th I think Flick would win on that one. He's the youngster of the crowd here. But, you know, Jack, both bands are here today. There was that, uh, because of what happened several years ago, the bands, this I believe is the first year they're both back. But the cheerleaders from yeah. both squads are still not here. I think this is the last year of that punishment of the rock. But, you know, I might go in the back here and get a rock and put it in the corner of the end zone for after the game. <laughs> yeah, you do that, you instigator, you. Yeah, the cheerleaders have been banned. Yeah, some of them are uh, sitting in the front row in front of us, not cheering, of course. So they, uh, well, they're, yeah, they have signs, right? Right. Yeah. They have signs. They're okay. raising the roof. Third down and seven. Oh, movement by the right side of the Slippery Rock line, including 66, Ryan Travis and others. You think Crookshank's frustrated. He just threw the football and hit one of his linemen in the rear end. Oh, jeez. I guess it's better than in the helmet. The last call was an illegal shift against the Rock, and now a false start, and they're moving backward quickly here. The Slippery Rock took a 14-10 lead with 10.56 to go in the third quarter. And then they got an interception from D'Amico and looked like they were on their way, but they missed a field goal. And then Oliver and Whitaker and company went to work. Here is Crookshank throwing all the way down the other side of the field, incomplete, overshot the, now they throw a flag and they're gonna call interference on Callahan on favors. I don't know if that ball, was that ball catchable? Well, I don't think it was catchable, but even if it was, Callahan had the inside positioning it was Favors who went over the top of Callahan there, and I don't know. That, that looks that's like a offense. horrible call. It's more offensive than anything. That is just... Yeah, look at the IUP bench with their arms extended, and I mean, that was, that was a bad call. First of all, as an official, you have to realize, okay, number six, Victor Callahan has the inside advantage on the receiver so he's doing nothing except turning and trying to go up for the football and it was favors who reached over callahan they flagged callahan so somewhere along the line could have been a makeup call for something else who knows best thing would have been a no call yes that would have been the best thing because the ball was thrown pretty far and you know they it looked like a no call but in any event we move it to the 46 of IUP in the 15-yard penalty in the first down for Slippery Rock. IUP leads 38-17, 10-22 to play. Crookshank throws the pass, incomplete, and Andre, no, it's caught by Golden. Oh, man, he made a great catch. Henderson went for the, the steal, the interception. He didn't get it. Golden carries it all the way down to the IUP 31 and a 16-yard uh, pass play. Not a bad try there by Henderson. You're up 38-17, so you want to try to put an exclamation point on it there. Go after the football. Not a uh, big deal on Henderson's part, but good concentration by Golden to uh, pull that one in with Henderson's hands in his face. Crookshank and company moving the football. Golden moves it to the 31 after the catch. And a new set of downs for the Rock with trips to the left side. Crookshank gives it on the draw. And with the football and downed at the 29, Corey Manville back in the game, replacing Nice, who's really had a workout today. Gain is two. Adam Schmidt making the stop. It's second down and eight. Adam Schmidt playing in that line. He's out of Beaver, 6'3", 280. And there's another guy who's quietly played a good game defensively for IUP. When he gets in there, he has made some things happen today. Crookshank lines them up with a flanker to the right, two receivers to the left side, favors as the outside receiver. 
Second down, four down lineman IUP. Crookshank with a little flanker screen to Golden. He's tackled by five IUP players at the 25. Andre Henderson, made Henderson the uh, spearheading the defense for the tackle IUP. P.J. Yurt Sr. was also there. Colin Golden is six foot, 215 pounds, and he used all of those 215 pounds to push the pile there. Third down for the Rock. He's from Factoryville, Pennsylvania. It's third down and four to go. Direct snap to Crookshank. Rolls to the right. Being pursued and hit. And they got him wrapped up, and they're going to drive him all the way back to the 40-yard line. What a play by Terrence Jackson. Jackson has had a great game today. Another freshman for IUP. And IUP's defense is just swarming right now. They have so much confidence out there on both sides of the football. It's almost like right now, Slippery Rock, just they might as well just pack it in and go home because IUP's just doing everything right. They'll mark off the loss progress or lack thereof was stopped at the 35. They must go to the 21. Fourth and 14 with 8.23 to go. They've got to go for it. And Crookshank loads up and lets it go one-on-one. -on -one. Incomplete down at the one-yard line. Intending it for Wetzel. Garrett Majors had the coverage. IUP takes over on down. Yeah, that scared me just a bit because Wetzel had the inside position on Majors and the height advantage. But he could not come down with it. IUP takes over. And IUP can start wearing out the clock now with the ball at their own 35 and a 21-point lead. You've done 400 games. This is your 400th game. Slippery Rock has 225 rushing, 225 passing. What's that equal, Jack? 500. Oh, 500. No, 450. <laughs> 450. <laughs> Just checking okay. your math. <laughs> I don't know. You guys are confusing me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know what that means, <laughs> all that stuff. And here we go with uh, the, the play clock was down to two, so somebody moved along the line of scrimmage. I just figured if you could add up all of the games you've done, you can add up that stat for me. No, I can't do that. And you were right, 450. But as I mentioned, if, if Edinburgh loses and IUP is going to win this, IUP will be in first place in the West by themselves with Edinburgh coming to town next week. That I hasn't happened. That's not over yet. We know right. that. A couple of weeks ago, Coach Signetti made that comment about, hey, you know, we've had some tough games to start our season off. We have all these freshmen. We're learning to play together as a team. When it gets into conference play, that's when it's really going to matter. And so far, it's a positive uh, start for IUP. Five-yard penalty. 15 to go. Handed off to Morgan. Morgan tackled by Whiting around the 30-yard line, around the line of scrimmage, maybe got a yard on the play. Look at Ty Tanner Whitaker, the center, is all the way down, blocking downfield at the 43-yard line. And again, that's the confidence that IUP has right now. They're just, they're not blocking just one guy. They're going out and getting two and three. They do lose yardage there, second and 14. So the ball's at the 31 of IUP. 740 and ticking, 38-17 IUP. Trying to put away the 100th career victory at George P. Miller Stadium for birthday head coach Frank Signetti. I formation, giving it on the draw, and it's Morgan, breaks one tackle, look out, and dives to the ground, loses a couple of yards. Forche and company putting pressure on Chris Morgan. Morgan running the ball. Well, the important thing here, obviously, is to let that clock just tick away. Doug, update. Yeah, they. Uh, you have to ask Mike Hoffman. Are they doing that alumni award so I know where to get Coach Signetti after the game? And Flick, you have to put dollar signs in front of those amounts. That's how Jack knows how to count better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, look who's talking. Third down and long. IUP must get to the 45. They're at the 29, 650 and ticking, 3817 IUP. Andrew Crewage under center. Hands the ball off safely to Morgan. He slides along the line of scrimmage, breaks a tackle, keeps on going to the 39. Tackled in the secondary by Brandon Ruskowski. And D'Amico helped out on the play. Rary will come in to do his job and punt it away. 
Well, Coach Signetti mentioned the week of practice IUP had. He said the coaches were very well prepared. They had a good game plan coming in, and uh, they should certainly put that into effect today. It carries over. When you have a good week of practice, it carries over. And the same on the other side of things. When you have a bad week of practice, you really have to gather yourself to play well because you, you just you can't bounce back from that when you make those same mistakes during the week. They just announced uh, Chris Morgan going over 2,000 career yards. And uh, Rary, oh, he brings it down. He throws a pass to Henderson, incomplete. There were five guys bearing down on him, and I had shades of Andre Hilliard going through my mind. Incomplete. Rary throwing the pass. He comes out with open look. Signetti is talking to Mike. Well, it was he, a smart he, he thing double, to do, double, it was going to be blocked. Yeah, it was going to be blocked. He double clutches and then throws it incomplete. Now, the problem is there's going to be an ineligible receiver downfield, obviously, on that uh, play, so it wouldn't have counted anyway. But if Henderson makes the catch, then they can punt it over again. This time they can't. The defense comes on the field. Henderson couldn't pull that in, but uh, Rary did everything he possibly could to make something out of that. Yeah, I, I, he did the right thing, no question, but all this series needs is something like that to anger up the juices of the opposition. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Smith, Coach Smith, and Coach Signetti is right in the face of Mike Rary. Slippery Rock has the ball on the IUP 40-yard line, 5.50 to play, and IUP has a 38-17 lead. Crookshank is a tough, tough competitor. He'll come right back at you. You can be assured of that. And he's going to fake, play action, drops back, looks for Kremen. He's going to run the football, tucks it in at the 35, the 30, and Plowman brings him down around the 28. Kept the clock going, though. Yeah, now they're going to uh, stop it to move the sticks. There could have been a couple of things why Coach Cignetti was upset with Rary there. Maybe Doug can check on why. Maybe he didn't have the proper depth uh, where he was lined up to punt the football, or maybe Coach just said, hey, Mike, your job is to punt the ball. Just kick it away and take our chances. We'll, we'll see. What he was upset. Doug, I'll, I'll get to you here as soon as this play unravels. Trips to the right side, Crookshank, there's the flag. It doesn't unravel, so I'll get down to you. Okay, Jack. Coach Sine was upset with Mike Rary because he's supposed to run the ball in that situation, and those guys came through because there wasn't any kind of a pass set up there. That's why the illegal ineligible guy downfield. As I'm getting buzzed here on my cell phone, Kevin Craig, the Slip Rock Rats, calling, wanting an update. What should I tell him, Jack? Uh, give him the score. Yeah. <laughs> As uh, Ben Dreith, my old favorite umpire and referee, would say, give him the business. <laughs> Kevin Craig is the answer to a Slippery Rock trivia question. The first time he carried the ball, he ran 95 yards for a touchdown. First down, and Crookshank with 15 to go is ready to pass. Loads up, down near the goal line. Should be intercepted, could be incomplete. It was too tall. Chiapetta was there. Jarrell Jackson, Ed Callahan was even in the vicinity. Incomplete pass down around the goal line. What's Stops amazing to me is there's no flags down on that play. Oh, my. Yeah. 5-11 to play. 38-17 IUP. As we approach Columbus Day Monday, we've seen a lot of flags. Not American flags today. A lot of yellow hankies on the field. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to announce the players of the game here in a moment. Pass over the middle. Caught by Favors. He is tackled. Wrapped up by Callahan at the 16. Callahan makes the tackle. Well, I'm certainly not questioning Coach Signetti there, but I'm just wondering if Rary would have run that football. I think he was in big trouble there. He goes down right there. Yeah, he may go down right at that spot. I, I actually thought it was a pretty smart thing for him to do because if he completes that pass, it's a penalty. But well, they I do think get what Coach Signetti is thinking is we're not trying to rub it in here, but I don't know. It's yeah. hard to say. Rolling to the left. Crookshank directing traffic, and DeCidero puts the hit on Crookshank. Ty's had a great game today. Another sack for IUP. Keeps the clock rolling at four and a half minutes and ticking. 38-17 IUP. Dug down on the sideline. Jack, I'm going to give you my play, my vote for the player of the game. Terrence Jackson on defense and Dianco Oliver on offense. He made things. He got the turnaround going with those two quick touchdowns. Yeah, I think that's who we did. Oliver and Jackson are the guys I think that they uh, have named up here. 
Direct snap to Crookshank, back to pass, in the pack. He's going to run out of the pack, runs around the corner, goes to the 15. And then a flag is thrown, and now another flag is thrown. Here we go. Crookshank on the previous play got down just in time before the sitter almost decapitated him. And uh, this time Crookshank gets out of there and runs shy of a first down, well shy, but the flag comes in late. Well, their big tackle, Ryan Travis, was not happy. Now, I don't know if that means that something is going to be called against Slippery Rock. And look at their bench. Look at their coaches over there with all the raspberries being directed, and I don't mean fruit either, to the officials. <laughs> well, you, you just don't want to see this one get out of control. I mean, it could you be know, one either, you know, one going each way. Yeah. Here. I don't know. As they ta talk about it with the clock stopped at 4.06. IUP going to win this one, 38-17 right now. Right now, the indication was just on Slippery Rock, the personal foul. Personal foul, number six, White. Personal foul Fire. favors, and favors has been ejected. That's going to stir the silent up again. As soon as they said ejection, the coaches again just step onto the field and Boy, they are they are they are vehemently arguing over there. I was waiting coach. for a certain word. Vehemently arguing <laughs> is, is what I was looking for. <laughs> now, does that mean, hey, Doug, he has a suspension too, or not? Like we saw last night. Well, in college, if it happens in the second half, he has to sit out. I believe the whole game next week. If it happened in the first half, half he just there. had to sit out the uh, first half next week. So I believe he will miss next week's game. But right now, IEP, I believe they're going to call a timeout just to get the defense settled down. Say, hey, don't do anything stupid. Now you saw what happened to Slipper Rock. Okay, we'll be back here in a moment as the argument continues. 38-17, and uh, once we're looking at the play, Favors is the guy. Let's see what he did. He gets up, and he yeah. mouths off to Terrence yeah. Jackson. And so I guess it's for what he said, because <laughs> he didn't throw a punch. The Crookshank gets up and pats Jackson on the head, showing the uh, good sportsmanship side. But no, no punches thrown, just some verbiage down there. Head coach Dr. George Mahalik arguing along the sideline. And we still haven't unraveled things with 4.06 to play. Crookshank talking with the official. We'll go back to the huddle. We got to keep it right here. We don't want to miss anything. 32-yard line of IUP and the official coming over, explaining to Coach Signetti what it's all about. It's like Dr. George and Victor Callahan are carrying on a conversation. Oh as yeah. Well. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, we've had more incidents, more things happen in IUP Slippery Rock than you could ever. You could write a book. Crookshank has to get his team to the eight-yard line for a first down. He'll play action. And zip it for the pass caught by Golden, down by at least three players at the IUP 19-yard line. And among those players, Adam Schmidt and Jarrell Jackson and DeSidero all making the tackle for IUP. And right now, IUP. Third down. Yeah, third down, and they'll allow that underneath stuff right here. Just keep them out of the end zone here as the clock continues to run. Trips to the right side. Crookshank with a third down and 12. He'll take the snap, and he'll give it on the draw to Manfield up the middle. And down he goes. Terry Jackson, uh, Terrence Jackson and company at the 13-yard line of IUP. And fourth down coming up with 313 and ticking. Fourth down, and almost six yards to go for the first down. Plowman out, and replaced by Anthony Guerra, defensive left end. Fourth down, almost, well, they do have to get five. 13, they got to go to the eight. Here's the fade in the left corner. It's too far. Out of bounds. Crookshank angry with himself. IUP takes over. We'll step out for 30 seconds. IUP 38, Slippery Rock 17. Let's take a 30-second timeout. 
The Co-op Store in Indiana is your IUP homecoming headquarters with special homecoming hours. Friday, 7 till 5, Saturday, 8 till 6, Sunday, 10 till 3. Get free apples, lollipops, and drinks. Save 10 to 50% off select IUP clothing, 20% off IUP imprinted gifts. Join the IUP women's basketball team at the Co-op Store to raise awareness for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. Check out IUPstore.com for details. The Co-op Store, your homecoming headquarters in the Hub Complex on the IUP campus. Okay, here we go. We are okay now. We got that break in, and the handoff goes to Stan the Man Grandy. And he's out over the 20. Stan had his biggest game of his career last year, over 100 yards against Slippery Rock. And Randall coming up to make the stop on Stan Grandy picks up 11 yards on the play in a first down. Timeout, Slippery Rock with 2.40 to go. Why? They're down by 21. There are miracles, but then there's reality, too. But the ball's at the 24 by UP, and we'll return on AM 1160 WCCS, RedZoneMedia.com, right after this. Hey, what will it be? Uh, whatever's on special. Or... Excuse me, did I hear you right? You didn't order my Jenny Light? Who are you? I'm Jenny, and clearly you haven't heard about the Jenny Light taste test. When we gave beer drinkers a blind taste test, here's what happened. This is much better. This beer's definitely got more flavor to it. I like the taste of that one better. See what I mean? I didn't know. Besides, if you don't choose my Jenny Light, you will never, ever get into my party. Let the party begin! Distributed locally by Mistrata Distributing, Homer City. Water Haven is a destination in your mind created by a combination of unique water delivery components. A dual shower with seven adjustable water ports, two telescopic shower arms, four body sprays, and a personal hand shower. Create a different experience, invigorating to soothing each time you step inside. Water Haven brings balance to your life. Stop in at Penn Stand Supply, 1050 Philadelphia Street, Indiana, your Kohler showroom, to discover the versatility of Water Haven for yourself. 1160 WCCS. Along with Jack Benedict, John Flickinger rejoining you from George P. Miller Stadium. It's been a good day for IUP as they move the football again. Slippery Rock's going to take a timeout. IUP will be faced with a second down and short as Stan Grandy carried the football there and uh, picked up a nice chunk of yardage off the left side. And those offensive linemen continue to block. A couple of statistics for you. IUP now over, well, right at 500, Mike, or are they just over the 500-yard mark in total offense? 503 of total offense. The Rock with 498. Do that math. We've <laughs> we've seen over a thousand yards in total offense in this one. Whoa, that's shades of IUP Lehigh in '85. Down to Doug Steve. Doug. Okay, Jack. It seems like Silverbrook's using all their time off. They must like to uh, stay down here and prolong the agony of their defeat today. But do we have final confirmation on the players of the game? Yes. Yeah, I think who is it? Morgan and Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. Chris Morgan and Terrence Jackson. By the way, the uh, the record for over for combined yardage was the Lehigh game of 1,049, so we're 48 yards away from that, with 2:23 to go. So this is one of those. Uh, that game was 49-41 in favor of Lehigh. Timeout, Slippery Rock. I think we need one more break, a 30-second break. 38-27 IUP. We'll return right after this brief timeout. Grandy carrying the football and he brings it on out to the 45 yard line and an eight yard pickup. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Slippery Rock using these timeouts for what reason? I don't know. The game's well in hand. IUP just picks up a first down, but then after the play, there's more extra cur curricular activities going on. It's almost like they call the timeout to kind of bait IUP into doing something stupid. Warning going in on the offensive line and Capizzi. Preseason All-American tackle coming out for IUP. Terrence Jackson, our defensive player of the game with eight tackles, seven solo, a sack on the day. And uh, Chris Morgan, 24 carries, 168 yards, and two more touchdowns. Over 2,000 in his career. Offset backfield, second down. Crewatch hands.